the Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. <laughs> Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Hello, beautiful people. It is Feel Good Friday, March 4th, 2022. And this sports show in Indianapolis shall begin right now. Can't thank you enough for joining us here. Yesterday was a monumental day in this show's history. Obviously, Cliff Kingsbury and Peter Schrager stopped by. Schrager was covering the combine all the way until 11 p.m. last night. Whoa. Looking fantastic. Not as fantastic as Cliff Kingsbury looks. Speaking of fantastic, Brandon Staley came yes, in he here. Did. Gave us an entire conversation where he basically said, I'm not an analytics guy. I'm not a stats guy. I look at my guys, I think we're better than those guys over there, and then you kind of roll the dice and you mm-hmm. go with it. Ever since he got Dustin Hopkins, he said, I know, we're kicking a little bit more once we get a good kicker. you got to have that. And then, obviously, a man walked in here wearing a blazer, jeans, what? and some incredible sneakers and gave us an hour-and-a-half conversation that he has never done before and for the first time in 15 years was live on a microphone outside of the WWE universe. Vince McMahon gave us an interview that I will look back upon for the rest of my life and be incredibly proud of. I'm so thankful for him. And tonight is the first SmackDown in which I am officially a WWE superstar. Yeah! <laughs> so now we are go! You, are you on the search tonight for an opponent or just you know, someone looks at you wrong in the hallway? You're my opponent. That's a great question by At 10 Diggs and obviously at Boston Connors here on the toxic table and... Ty Schmidt is not here. Ty, <sighs> Ty was tasked with doing something for a family. Hey, hey Ty. Hey, Ty. We miss you, Ty. Miss you, Ty. Ty. How's the family? Ty's healthy. How's the family? Much better because he's not here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I believe he was kind of put in a predicament, which is very fascinating, but that's life whenever there's humans involved. We can't wait for him to be back on Glorious Monday. But yeah, I guess like anybody looks at me sideways, I'll smack you in the mouth mm-hmm. of WrestleMania. Do you want it? No, I have no idea. I didn't know he was going to ask me that. I thought he was potentially giving me the company at one point. Did, that that was, yeah. I didn't know what was taking place. All the rumors on the internet were surprises to me earlier in the week. He came in here, gave us a great convo in the middle of it, offered me a chance to live out my dreams at WrestleMania. I mean, it is... Yesterday was fucking awesome. And tonight, I have no idea what to expect. We're down in Miami. That is a long flight. Yeah. Hey, it's way down there. Bottom of Florida. People, people like, you know, whenever you think about like the Bahamas Mm -hmm. and you even think about Cuba, fuck, you think about Cuba, you think about that. Cuba. That's right. You Mm -hmm. think about, I put the Cuban links on, by the way, because we're heading down there. But you think about the entire Caribbean, you're like, wow, that's a, that's a hell of a flight. You know, that's under Miami's right. It is a, I got a two and a half hour flight. I had no idea that was going to happen whenever I send a text on Tuesday or Wednesday. Hey, how long is the flight so we can figure out? First of all, I thought I was going to Birmingham, Alabama. I had no idea we were in oh. Miami until, <laughs> you know, actually. Yes, roll, tide. roll tide there. I thought we were in Birmingham. I was pretty excited about yeah. going to Birmingham. Instead of going to Miami, oh, much nicer. I won't see much of it, but it's very beautiful. How long is that flight? Two and a half hours. So we moved the show up today. We're very thankful everybody's able to join us. Excited for tonight to answer your question, Tone. I have no idea how this whole thing is going to go. Because now they're putting out Pat McAfee versus who? Versus who? What? I'm assuming they're going to try who? to figure that out. Who could be worse? It, but I do know this if they let me have a microphone live in mm. the middle of that ring at any point from here until WrestleMania, we are going to be trying to bring the electricity to that microphone. And obviously, I'm great with scripts, is what everybody says. Yeah, yeah, Tell, yeah. big teleprompter guy, big teleprompter guy should be an absolute <laughs> blast. Very thankful everybody's here. There is some big news that we have to get to immediately. Amari Cooper is getting cut from the Cowboys. Seems Whoa, like, seems like a- yeah, we have Ian Rappaport joining us in about 25 minutes. We have Mike McDaniel joining us, the new head coach of the Dolphins, live in studio about an hour from now. He'll be sitting right there. Hilarious individual. His name came out of nowhere, but everybody talks very highly of his big old brain out of Yale. Maybe he'll turn the Dolphins into the Dolphin happy community down there. That's what we can hope at Bubba Gumpino. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. He actually said hell yeah the other day when John Lynch was talking yeah. about him. He said, hell yeah, I've never heard anything more relatable out of a guy. And everything you said seems to be hilarious. I'm excited to see what he is going to do to that Miami Dolphin fam. Now, I did see you put the two of tarp on, let him know that you are a fan. I respect that. We need you, Mike. Give us hope, please. He's already run out of time. Need to win yesterday. Yeah, that's hey. right. I'm 36, my friend. I haven't seen a playoff win since 2000. We're running out of time. Hey, let's get this it. thing going yeah, here, go Mike. On, hey, go. good luck out there, Mike. We'll, we'll get it, Mike. We'll make sure we let him know about the urgency that is felt by all the Dahl fam and the Finn community and everything like that. But whenever you talk about the NFL big-time news, Amari Cooper being cut from the Dallas Cowboys is massive news. If you do recall, when Amari Cooper went to the Dallas Cowboys, it was out of the Oakland Raiders camp when they were trying to drop off everybody see you later Khalil Mack see you later Amari Cooper what? and when John Gruden was asked about this at the time after he had just signed a 10-year 100 million dollar contract to be the head coach of the Raiders out of the Monday Night Football booth he was asked why he said, that's a lot of money man is what he said about <laughs> Khalil and Amari Cooper what they were getting paid let alone the 100 million he was getting paid with salary cap Amari Cooper goes to Dallas becomes a superstar he and Denton doesn't become a superstar, continues to be a superstar. He and Dak have a great relationship. And then as the seasons continue to win, with the whole thought of, you know, CD's a guy. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of great tight end down there. Oh, yeah. Zeke is obviously a superstar. They're loaded up. Is Amari Cooper and his $20 million price tag going to be on the Dallas Cowboys in the 2022 season? Then once you started looking into the details of the contract, you know, that's where the devil is. That's right. The devil is in the details. Once you get that magnifying glass out to look for the devil in the details of the contract, it's like, oh, the Cowboys saved $16 million if they cut or move on from Amari Cooper. And in the world that we're in with a plethora of weapons for the Dallas Cowboys, and although the salary cap means absolutely nothing, it felt like the writing was on the wall maybe for Amari Cooper to get released. Never would have thought of it just by ourselves. But once there was smoke that Amari Cooper's future, especially when Stephen Jones came out and said he's not certain about it, it was almost like, okay, Amari Cooper's moving on. With that being said, can't wait to see Amari Cooper as an Indianapolis Colt. Whoa. He's going to be great That's here it. in Indiana. I assume New England's going to take a shot at Absolutely. this guy. Green Bay's going to take a shot sure. at this guy. Amari thing. Cooper is 27 years old. Mm -hmm. He has 4,000 yard receiving years already under his belt. A lot of football in front of him. Hell of a player. Everybody likes him. This is... Great for Amari Cooper business-wise. I'm sure he's bummed that who he thought he was going to be with forever, the Dallas Cowboys, when he signed a five-year deal with them that we're only two years into. So whenever you hear Kyler Murray say, I want a new deal, and everybody's like, this player's entitled. Well, business has been happening this way, the other way around for a long time. Mm -hmm. Amari Cooper is going to be highly sought after. At Tone Diggs, your thoughts on the entire situation? Over? Highly, highly sought after. Uh, you're, the, the teams that you mentioned – Fucking great fits for him. There's a, there's a few others that will probably be great fits for him as well. Shout out the Cowboys too for uh, structuring this contact contract that they can only. I mean, it's only six million against the the cap this year, so not terrible for them. Uh, but the Cowboys now they went from having Cooper, Lamb, and Gallup. Now Cooper's probably gone. Gallup is a free agent after a torn ACL, so now all they have is CD Lamb. So now they're a team that looking at last night. Everyone's running four threes. Maybe gets a wide receiver in this. Okay, game. so let's look at the combine times for the wide receivers last night. We talked to um, was it Shrakes? Shrakes, Dan Jeremiah, maybe? Daniel Jeremiah, maybe. I'll tell you what, normally pretty good memory, but all this shit is kind of blending yeah. together. 20 guests this week. week. Daniel, yeah. it's been an awesome week. Very. We'll look back on this week and think about how fucking cool this all has been. And who knows what's even happening tonight in Miami. Yeah, here we go. It's Smackdown, 8 o'clock on five. I mean, who knows? What well, I don't. No. Just like I didn't know what was going to happen in the conversation with Vince when he offered me the goddamn thing. I don't know if you guys saw my uh, heart rate spike when oh, yeah. he offered oh, yeah. me that thing. There's an outlier up at 150. <laughs> my heart rate went up to like, Big oh, my time. God, is this very real? But whenever you start thinking about the depth of speed oh, that yeah. is all of a sudden very real in all these guys that are coming out of college, is it because we know more about the human body than we ever have in the past? Yes. Is it because we know better strength and conditioning programs that get you in a position to be the most explosive you could possibly be? Yes. Are guys just naturally going to get better at things as they continue to practice because of, you know, technique and the drive and like, hey, have good form and everything like that? There, there are so many fast dudes down. Mm -hmm. Last night, 428, Tyquan Thornton out of Baylor, wide receiver. He led the class. It was originally 421, I think. And mm -hmm. we got to talk about the network. Come on. <laughs> hey. Do better. I'm not going to say it because it's a very tired take. But doing things just for clicks and for eyes is like, I feel like something of the past. Now, granted, 
still get eyes, still get clicks. But on the other end of it, a lot of people look dumb now. Because we learn so much so quickly and we're in an information age, people used to be able to just like, you know, say some stuff that wasn't real and then they'll retract it later, you never hear that. Say some stuff that wasn't real and then you retract it. Say, they were saying everybody was like 0.15 faster than they actually were yesterday. Uh -huh. And that was becoming gospel everywhere. Yeah. There's three people that were faster than Tyreek Hill and John Ross yesterday whenever they ran. One of them was a defensive lineman. <laughs> Somehow, <laughs> some way, these numbers were nowhere near what they actually were. And we have boots on the ground at the combine. Yeah, we do. I'm not just saying coaches and equipment managers and everything else like that. But these guys are getting messages after they run their first 40 from people that are watching on TV telling them, hey, you don't need to run again because how good the time is. Then it's not for like 15, 20 minutes later, whenever the entire period is already ended, where you find out the official time that's happening, laser time, and it's a much slower time. Granted, these guys incredibly fast, but if these a couple of these dudes who chose not to run again, run again, who knows what they could tap into? It's a wild time. And are they doing that on purpose? Maybe. Hey, I you know, you hear somebody runs a 421 while well, very serious stuff is happening in the world at the sure, same exact sure, time. Sure, sure. Shregs is up there wearing an incredible suit covering. Rich Eisen, Geo's there. Daniel Jeremiah's there. Charles Davis is there. What? Uh, I forget. There's a bunch of people covering that whole thing. And there's very real stuff happening in the world. By the way, we hope everybody's okay. Let's mm -hmm. fuck. Let's get somehow cooler heads prevail somehow. Yeah, tease and peace. I don't know how it's going to happen, but let's hope that. But whatever you hear, somebody somebody just ran a 421. Somebody just ran a 422. It's like, all right, I'm going to go check this out. Exactly. Got me. Yeah. Hook, line, and sinker. And then it wasn't until like 30 <laughs> minutes later, it was like, I actually ran 428, 439, that particular person. I'm like, how are you that far off? Because I can watch a punt. Uh, I used to be able to watch a punt, the hang time. <laughs> and I put it down. I'm like, all right, I'm probably going to be within 0.05 of what that thing is. I don't know how they've been off so much. They're... Point one being off in a 40 is the difference between being a first rounder and being a fifth rounder. Like that is a massive mm -hmm. mistake to make, but I guess we can't blame anybody. It's drawing eyes. It's bringing eyeballs. I've enjoyed watching these dudes run, but the speed is fantastic. We're nowhere near what it was being marketed. And we heard from a source the times weren't supposed to come out until after the second 40. So things like that didn't happen where... You know, people would maybe get messages, hey, your first 40 is good enough, don't run the second. Yeah, because pro days are going to happen. Guys can get back in there. And I guess if you're running 4-2 or 4-3, people are like, ah, fucking fast. Sure. Yeah. yeah. But every, I didn't know how they were off so much. Now, the two wide receivers from uh, Ohio State become the fastest tandem out of the first, uh, out of the same school since other wide receivers out of Ohio State, Terry McLaurin and Paris Campbell, uh, ran the fastest 40. Two sub 4-4 four, four times out of Ohio State for Garrett Wilson and Chris Olive. 439 and 438. Uh, second pair of wide receiver teammates since 2006 to run sub 4 four times at the same combine. The only other duo, Scary Terry and Paris Campbell. That's via Field Yates. Now, Paris Campbell's obviously gotten injured, un yeah. unfortunately, but both of those guys have been electrifying in the NFL when they've had their time. Scary Terry much more than Paris. Paris Campbell also got the number one jersey in Indianapolis. Yeah. And swore that he didn't play that much. He got hurt. He got unlucky. But whatever the case, speed kills matchups. That's all anybody's looking for. Let's make sure we get him accurate. And those guys, Garrett Wilson, if you look at Daniel Jeremiah, he has him as like the fifth or sixth overall player, number one wide receiver. And then Alave is like 20th. So those guys just definitely like just locked up. Uh, Connor, your thoughts on the combine as a whole? Did you just watch it all day, every day? Is that what you've been up to these days? Yeah, I mean, uh, Gumpy stayed for a little bit, watched the uh, quarterbacks, you know, throw the pigskin too. But also, How'd they do? Uh, Malik uh, Willis, I believe yeah. his last name is. He threw some pretty balls. So. I saw some clips of him having a great yeah. ball. He calves too, by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Massive. And then there's a video going around of him donating something he got from Nike. Uh, Nike gave an oh, entire too. bag of stuff. I assume Adidas did as well and Under Armour. I don't know if he's a Nike guy. Uh, he was donating something he got out of the Combine Nike gift bag to a homeless person on the street here in Indianapolis. And he didn't do it for the cameras, although a camera did find him doing it. That's obviously something that is fantastic to see and read and hear about. Bring him home. But I don't think we know it. To Pittsburgh, Malik, yeah? Bring him home. Okay. I think you guys are at the point where it's like, you guys got Carson Wentz, so you just need to realize that. No, 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 no. Carson's Except, going mean, to Pittsburgh. Yeah, I mean, that guy can sling it. That's that's something that you're trying to, you know, speak into existence, which, which worries me because you do that quite a bit. Uh, it does seem like I do have that. But maybe, yeah, that maybe happens. you speak that in existence for, like, the commanders. Maybe Carson Wentz goes to the commanders, and we're both happy. Oh, that'd be great. Him go to Washington, D.C. That's yeah. exactly where yeah. Carson Wentz is supposed to go. He's exactly. slaughter there. I, the hunting, I don't know, but he would do so uh, well. Maryland, they got some killers over there in oh, Maryland. Okay. Oh, yeah. Virginia's got sure. some land, too, I believe yeah. okay I, so I, you got some Appalachian. carl quick. will crush it i mean absolutely no offense by this because like you know 
I come from a family of like, you know, white trash folks, but <laughs> hunters. There's a lot of rednecks and hilljack and hillbillies oh, over yeah. there in Maryland okay. and Virginia and Oh yeah, you just got to get out of the, you just got to get out in there a little bit. So he'll crush. Yeah, well, I don't know if he'll crush. I think he'll be good anywhere. I yeah. think he'll be good anywhere. Maybe Ma- Carolina. Maybe oh, Carolina. Yeah. Carolina. Is that what people are thinking? Do people are thinking Carson Wentz signed in Carolina? No, actually, I haven't heard that at all. But uh, they need Maybe a QB. They, 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 they got need a warm body to throw the ball. Cam has been floating back out there as well. McCaffrey's not going to be there anymore. So. Yeah, they're saying he's training him, and allegedly, mm-hmm. uh, Panthers fans. We only saw one tweet that says <laughs> this. Here's a what? Make it happen. Gumpy was trying to paint this narrative in the text message you. He's like, yeah, it appears as if Panthers fans are turned on Christian McCaffrey. <laughs> but I think it's because Panthers fans have heard for a long time that Christian McCaffrey is definitely going to be a part of trade bait there. I think it's interesting because all the dominoes will fall into place after a couple big moves are made. The Aaron Rodgers decision is still one that's lingering yeah. out mm-hmm. there. I assume there's a lot of boozed up conversations happening around town here in Indianapolis about him, about other veteran quarterbacks, Carson Wentz included. Malik Willis is continuing to rise and raise his stock. It, it, it doesn't make sense to me though that people say that these quarterbacks are not good in this draft because we all know that if a team misses out on a quarterback in the in the free agency period if two teams i'm sorry two teams would have to miss out on a quarterback in the free agency period as soon as we get to the draft somebody's gonna make a big move Mm -hmm. and be like fuck it we'll take this guy and we're just gonna roll the dice on it because we had no other options uh you remember last year the the Jay knew and the quarterback moving as far as the odds and stuff like that. Last week, um, Kenny Pickett was the favorite to go first overall as far as quarterbacks were concerned. Plus 110, Malik Willis was plus 150. Malik Willis is now minus 145. Kenny Pickett is plus 185. So it's already, the whole thing has already started. And the hand size, I guess, yesterday didn't help. Eight and a half inch hands mm-hmm. it would be the smallest hands in the history of the NFL playing quarterback is what wow. was said. Didn't know that. Recent history, maybe. I don't know if it's since, all of history. Since Mike Vick, I think 2001 or whatever. To, yeah. Yeah, so recent history. Uh, this is via Todd McShay, who's back on. Hey, baby Todd. Hey, hey Todd. Todd. Hey. Good to see him out there. Todd, you're allowed to be happy, though, too. Remember, you got a cool job. Pittsburgh quarterback, all these people on TV. <laughs> hey, dude, you're not curing cancer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right? Tannenbaum's been fucking oh, that guy. guy. You should have seen him this morning. Yeah, he. I mean, what he said this morning, Keyshawn told him he thinks he's been drinking the whole time. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's wrong in Indianapolis mm-hmm. what Keyshawn said, but all the, like... You know, Rodgers is getting old because he looked behind him when he was running. Yeah, he's slowing down. He'd rather have Just Justin Herbert. second MVP, which, by the way, I, I mean, mean, there's some people that probably feel that way, but also you probably have... You know, never won at the position of importance or whatever the case is. But yet, they, everybody's just so serious. Like, hey, you don't have to be so serious all the time. Yeah. You're talking about kids wearing 40s right now. Loosen well, up. men, by the way. Everybody's saying kids because they're very young. But these are men now. They're 20, 21, 22. Okay. These, hey, you can serve in the military. You're a fucking man. Exactly. That's oh, right. Yeah. You can't drink a beer a lot of times. But you can, you know, serve in the military. Which, that's an entire new conversation. Oh, yeah. I used to say it when I was 19. So you're telling me I would go serve in war. I can't drink a beer at this place? Uh-huh. <laughs> Think about that. You're like, no, what about this fake idea I got right here? Huh? No, I can't. Uh, I can do both. What? Give me 10 of those. What? Five of those. What? And 30 for all my friends in this place that I haven't met yet. Anyways, Tom McShay, have a little fun. This is fun, dude. Yeah, fun. These dreams Toy. come true. Fun. This is football. Pittsburgh quarterback Kenny Pickett hand span measurement was eight and a half, well below the nine inch red flag line. Most teams aren't putting any real stock into that. It should be noted that Michael Vick 2021 was the last quarterback with a sub nine inch hand span to achieve sustained success in the NFL. Yeah, so the narrative, that's via Todd McShay. Welcome back, Todd. The narrative is nine inches. If your hand span, which is thumb to tip of pinky. We did around the office. I'm at nine. I believe you were at nine and a half. Yeah, in between Ooh. there. Foxy was nine and three quarters. Wow. There was a couple eights and sevens in the office. Okay. That we don't have to talk about. But Couldn't be me. I was an NFL. <laughs> couldn't be me either. But I was an NFL quarterback. <laughs> I had a, a nine inch uh, pinky to mm-hmm. uh, Probably nine and a quarter. Thumb. Yeah, I think so. Because it didn't do quarter sizes. But also... Uh, I'm Irish. Irish uh, Sprint. have stubby. Stubby fingers. Oh. Sausage fingers. Yeah, sausage fingers. And I realized that when I went to Ireland Potato and I shook fingers. everybody's hands, I'm like, seems like everybody's hands just beat with mallets. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> they just yeah. get, seems like everybody's got like these little sausage fingers. So yeah. I'm, I'm pretty pumped, actually. And I was a successful NFL quarterback, highest passer rating on Thanksgiving. Exactly. And I could spin an NFL ball still. Mm-hmm. 
Like that is something. Now, if I had to move or if that ball is getting battered or my hand's getting hit, like that's the conversation. Everybody thinks it's just for throwing. It's not just for throwing. It's for, hey, if your elbow gets hit and the ball is in your hand, if Aaron Rodgers like engulfs the ball, people, there's yes. been numerous stories about that. That thing's probably much more secure in the pocket if anybody's coming through. So although Kenny Pickett played in Pittsburgh and he's a tough dude and he wears two gloves so it adds extra grip, that is something that some people who want to bash him will probably look at, especially whenever stats, who always seem to be on everybody's sure. side, say like, hey, nobody's really been able to do this at a high level since Mike Vick, and that's way, way, way back. But there's was, I mean, the Pony Express out of Pittsburgh put a video up of him warming up over in the uh, convention center yeah. and said, hey, this guy works harder than everybody. Well, he's just warming up, obviously. <laughs> he threw quite a duck. I mean, that was a bad, 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 yeah, bad but ball. But the ball was moving. Kenny Pickett had success. Uh -huh. Seems like he's a great leader. His teammates seem to love him. I got to meet him whenever I called the pick game. I enjoyed him as a human. I think those factors are much more important. But having tiny hands is not great whenever you're going into a draft class in which everybody's saying, hey, this yeah. quarterback draft class isn't good. That just adds something else. But there's literally nothing Kenny Pickett can do about it. There is not a single thing he can do about it except for go about doing his job and doing his business. But it is fascinating how much... Shit seems to be real during this combine period, and then we move on, and it's like, yeah, let's watch the film, actually. Yeah. You know, it feels like everything's much more important now than it actually is in the grand scheme of things. Well, and that's the thing about the combine. Like, sure, all this stuff matters. The 40s matter, but at the end of the day, you really don't know how these guys are going to be until the season actually fucking starts. But I think Kenny Pickett, Mitt said earlier, he had a lot of fumbles. So Please. to your point about holding on the That's the whole ball, thing. Yeah. Everybody always says, oh, it's he could throw the ball, he could throw the ball, he could throw the ball. It's like, yeah, yeah, he could throw the ball. But how about when, um, you know, some 30-year-old man who has been feeding his family and his community for the last eight years in the NFL, is ripping around the edge, and he isn't able to get a sack, but he is able to hit in the ribs mm -hmm. while you're holding on to that thing. Like, that is the thought. And instead of a sack happening, mm -hmm. like an awkward sack happening, oh, all of a sudden, that's a fumble sack. Like, that's a game changer. Like, that is what you can, if you want to overanalyze everything, that is also the potential backfire of having tiny little hands out there. Yeah, it was like 27 or 28 it was high. in the college career. It's a lot of fumbles. And it's but he also has dropped back a lot. They threw, oh, yeah, a ton. They threw the ball. Whip. Well, and then like... We Whipple? Yeah, Mark Whipple. 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 Where's he at now? Oklahoma. He did he go to... The... He took a job. I don't he know, did. Was it an NFL job or a no, college? No, it was another college gig. It might have been Oklahoma, yeah, because they brought in old Nebraska, buddy from Clemson. Sorry. Oh, he went to Nebraska. Okay. They stink. Scott right? Frost, yeah, they stink. Whipple's <laughs> offense, though, is very much like air raid style off. They're dropping they throw. back, throw a lot. Uh -huh. So he's in the pocket a lot. Correct. So a lot of fumbles, you can add that now. Every stat that you see, you can add in there. Malik Willis, though. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, this is a couple times in the last few years where we've learned about Liberty University sure. quarterbacks. Heineke who is now the starter, I guess, for the Commanders. Yeah, right at the Liberty? moment. Although they... He's Old Dominion, but same conference. Same oh, I thought he was Liberty. Who else went to Liberty? Let me see. I don't know. I thought he went to Liberty. He did not Lib go to Liberty? Liberty, I just remember, because that guy was calling plays up in the booth from like a dentist chair or some shit. No, really? I don't remember <laughs> yeah. that. No, they have what's his name. Hey, no offense to Liberty. Like no. I appreciate everybody playing, and Malik seems like a hell of a player. It's hard for me to give a fuck about Liberty football. Boy. Who's, the, who's the school I love that uh, Little Vinatieri just went to? Uh, UMass Boston. Uh, but, UMass Amherst, excuse me. Um, is that where he's going? Yeah, UMass Amherst. Yeah, that, I'm a big fan of them. Uh -huh. Okay, that, that's my school. Minutemen. I'm a, I'm a fan of the Minutemen because their punter is going in there and bombing balls immediately. He had offers to LSU and other places. He went there, so it's like, all right, it would have been cool to be a fan of that other team because they're probably on national television. It's going to be fine. hard to find these UMass games to see AJ play. But I'm on that team. All those other schools, it's hard for me to keep up with. I do apologize. His highlights of him just running around everybody as if he's playing varsity and JV football. How do you end up at Liberty? Why do you end up at Liberty? And how is the transition from Liberty to the NFL is what everybody is probably asking. They said in meeting rooms, Malik's retention of the offense mm -hmm. whenever he was told about it was very, very impressive. They said the way he handled himself in the film room was very impressive. A couple of his throws, him giving the shirt out. Seems like this is a guy that you're ready to make a guy, but how do we have any clue what the transition's going to be like from Liberty to the fucking If NFL? I remember his story correctly, he was very, I think he was highly recruited. He went to Auburn. Something yep. happened in Auburn, went to Liberty. Transfer. Uh, yeah, transfer to Liberty. Hugh Freeze, 
was coaching from his hospital bed up in the booth is what you were thinking there of is. at Liberty. Li Hugh Freeze is Oh, that was Liberty when he was laying down? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was awesome. Oh, my God. Because Hugh Freeze did something terrible, right? I mean, he did something oh, terrible. I think to get so. to, yeah. I think or it just, so. it wasn't good. Hugh. I forget what it was. Because I remember the internet being like, of course, this guy. Now we're celebrating this guy because he's in a hospital bed. When he did, he might have done some recruiting violations. Which oh, okay. Nowadays is just fake. That's what everyone's doing. Yeah. I mean, nil now. Yeah, might as well just say, hey, we we tried to, yeah. we tried to stop it. We can't. Right, we're just giving our ball. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> That's the only reason I know Liberty. Still the best. Still the fucking best, dude. <laughs> Is he calling plays or just like Joe Paul pooping? Did he call pants? a good game from there? I, I think, think he was they won. <laughs> they win? Yeah. This dude's calling plays. <laughs> yeah, I think they, they won. Were, I, they were undefeated last year, went a, and then this year they had a couple of. Well, they had so out of in the right. Well, they had Malik play yeah, yeah, quarterback. Yeah, yeah is, is this? They put that thing in them where they're like, count down from 10, you won't make it to five. Yeah, the IV. <laughs> yeah, the IV. I got you, though. What happened? The best, what dude. is uh, this? Uh, let's get to a break, man. We've talked too much about shit we don't know. Let's get, um, when we come back on the other side, we'll have Ian Rappaport joining us. Here we go. Hopefully he'll be able to explain all this stuff happening in the men's league and what's going on around the combine, but he's just been boozed up all week. That's what I was going to say. Hopefully he can explain it. Hopefully he's just not that hungover because I've heard he's been blacking out everywhere. <laughs> he lost his, lost his coat at one of the bars. Yeah. Right here. Our sources have told us that Rappaport has been orangutan. Bar ran out of Jaeger because him and the Arrow Pelissero wouldn't stop drinking it. Yeah, so hopefully we'll be able to get him back in the game. You know, we'll send some Jaeger to all these bars if we have to. Mm -hmm. So Rapport can continue to pound the pavement. Let us know what's going on behind the scenes. Amari Cooper, cut. Woo. See you later. Pete Carroll, we're not shopping our quarterback. Oh, that Russell Wilson said I'm here now and I love it. Yeah, or what does Rapport know? Where's Carl Wentz going? Has he heard anything about that downtown? Ooh. What's going on behind the scenes of the NFL, of the NFL's spring break, which is the combine here in Indianapolis, Indiana. We'll catch up with the local booze bag. <laughs> Sports Insider. Senior NFL Insider, Ian Rappaport in four minutes. It'll be worth the conversation, I think. Be a friend, tell a friend. We'll see you then. I want to offer you something. Okay. Do I need like a pen or something? You probably need sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, and that's where you normally are. You know, it's like, and I know you love what we do. Um, and you're a part of the team, big big time. And people in the organization really enjoy, and fans all over the world really enjoy you being you, you know? And I, you know, you, you can't find anyone, I can't imagine back in the day, Bob Costas standing up on a desk and dancing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you're you, you know? And that's why it works, you know? and. Uh, so with that, it's like I'd, I'd like to offer you a, an opportunity to actually wrestle at WrestleMania. Oh. It'd be a dream, boss. In the ring. Now, it's, it would be the difference, though, when you played for the Colts. It would be the difference of, like, okay, you're the punter. Okay. But now, in the ring, you're going to be a linebacker. 24 tackles in the NFL. No big deal. <laughs> Uh, that would be a fucking dream, obviously. And by the way, there's been a lot of chatter on the internet about me getting back into the ring and wrestling at WrestleMania. And I've had so many torn, conflicted feelings because, you know, I'm, I'm out of shape. I am out of shape. <laughs> I, I, there's a lot of vitamins that go into these lungs, Vince, and like the, the, the things coming up. But WrestleMania is something I've obviously stolen from you. By the way, back in the day, we'd go to whoever had the black box, would steal WrestleMania. Uh -huh. So I'm sorry about that. I probably owe you like seven, eight, ninety nine, 99 or something like that for that whole thing. But obviously, it is the standard at wrestling. I would love to. That'd be an absolute honor. See, in the ring, we'll find some worthy opponent for you. Put you in the ring. Oh, wow! That's awesome. Oh, holy shit! Hey, huh? Did you, you see know, the ring when you walked by? By the I way, I did. I was impressed. You have your own ring. Yeah, I got. It looks like a standard WWE ring. Well, listen. I don't know if that's how hard your rings are, but goddamn, that thing hurts. Like hell. <laughs> <laughs> that thing hurts like hell. This is incredible, by that's the way. Awesome. Is this a real deal? I mean, are we really? Yeah. No, I don't bullshit. I don't, <laughs> I don't do that. Let's, Let's go. go. Here go. we go. Yeah. Hell yeah. Go. Welcome back to the Pat Max. Oh, Unreal. Oh, yeah. Unreal. Foxy's added some new tools to the arsenal. Hell yeah. A couple transitions. Some new shots to the bag. Wow. 
I assume we've had access to these for a long time. I've known about them forever. Yeah. <laughs> Why not today? I guess. I mean, you just found out about them, so let's go. Can we hit one more of those? Yeah, things? here we go. We'll go to the boys. Yeah. Whoa! Oh! Oh! Back. I'm blue. I would be. I would die. I would be. I would die. I would be. 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 Hey, welcome back to the Pat McAfee Show here on this glorious Feel Good Friday, March 4th, 2022. No answer for me in Rockport. The bass in the sun, though. I didn't even hear it, to be honest with you. I couldn't even really. It's going. Yeah, I might pound some speakers, you know? Wonder Back in the day, we used to have two 12s in the trunk. One of the. With a box. You guys don't know nothing about that, you kids. Yeah, I do. B -b -b Big subwoofers in the back. Yeah, big, big, big sub woofer in the back. Like, what's up, brother? Blow the windows out the frame. It's a party when I pull the big, big, big sub woofer in the back. Like, what's up, blow the windows out the frame. It's a party when I pull the big, big, big sub woofer. woofer. That was a banger. Yeah, still is. Did not get enough love, no. I think, whenever it came out. Mount Westmore. That was uh, Snoop and all that. Yeah, have they released uh, any more? Uh, what they have? They had song. 50 songs or something. Yeah, 48, like I think, Ice Cube said. Yeah, but you young bucks would never understand somebody rolling through going... <laughs> Uh, now you got you, you got to put on the one song you knew uh, growing into school that actually that put him out, and it was normally Bia Bia, but yeah, Bia Bia, Bia, Bia gave Bia. a good one. Yeah, that was definitely your guys' generation, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I was a little bit older than us, I think. Yeah, a little yeah. bit older than us. The generation they used to like build boxes. People used to feel so cool when oh, they yeah. built their like boxes. The shittiest of cars. That was more too. like Nitrous Rush, like yeah. car club. What's this guy talking about? Shittiest of cars. Jeep Lightning had a box in the back. Yeah. Yeah. I, trust me, I had neighbors that had it. You could yeah. hear it from Chrysler all the LHS way in the neighborhood. Yeah, Chrysler some. Toyota Corolla. Get rich or die trying to. That changed the game. Oh, in the club or everything. Bump. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Join us now as an insider for the insiders, a man who's been boozed up all week in our city here in Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. Hopefully he learned some stuff. The host of the weekly wrap-up with Rap Sheet and Friends, us being friends, he being Rap Sheet. Ladies and gentlemen, senior NFL insider for NFL Network and NFL.com, Ian Rappaport. Yay, Rap Sheet! Yeah. Yeah. What are you Hold doing? On. Stumbling out of your hotel here, pal? You all right? Uh I would not describe it as such. I would describe <laughs> myself as calm, cool, collected, but very, very tired. Yeah. That's, uh, that's my number one. Let's see who's in this room. Oh, people are in. I'm looking for a nice place to, to go sit. Um, I, w I would uh, describe it as a productive week, though. Very productive, which is good. Well, I'm happy to hear it sounds like you mixed in a couple waters. There was a lot of stuff written on the wall over there, that first room you went into. I thought maybe we were going to get some secrets. Where mm -hmm. are you? In the convention center right now? Yeah, I was having a, a secret meeting uh, a couple minutes ago and uh, went to an undisclosed location. And now I'm wandering the hallways of said undisclosed location before going upstairs at the JW and having a coffee. Upstairs. So you're at the JW currently. No. Okay. Okay. Undisclosed. Yeah, yeah, undisclosed, undisclosed, undisclosed. undisclosed, undisclosed. Obviously, great, uh, great hotel over there. Let's talk about what you've learned this week while getting boozed up. The behind the scenes really starts cooking at the combine. Everybody says all the agents are here, all the GMs are here, all the ideas are being tossed around and floated. Amari Cooper being released from the Cowboys. I guess this is the first kind of big time news out of the NFL spring break. That is the combine saves them sixteen million dollars. He's coming to the Colts. Is that what you're hearing? <laughs> 
Uh, I'm not so sure about that last part. I I, uh, I believe what? he's done with the Cowboys. Um, I think they'll try to trade him before they release him, which I think makes some sense. Now, it's a big contract. It's $20 million. The Cowboys can get out from under it, so I do not believe that he'll be back next year, but I'm not so sure that – it might take a minute. I think they will try to try to trade him, see what they can do, see if they can get some value for him before they ultimately decide to release him. There's no rush. Like his contract doesn't become fully guaranteed until the fifth day of the league year, so they got plenty of time to see if see if they can swing a trade. Are they floating this out there that they're going to cut him just to see if anybody will come make offers for a trade? This feels to be like recent history, the new move. Like, remember Rodney Hudson from the Raiders yeah. a couple years ago? He was cut, then he was traded to um, the Cardinals. Then it happened last offseason. I forget who it was. It was a veteran player who was cut, then he was traded. Maybe Stefan. I'm not, no. Uh, no. uh, Gilmore, yeah. Didn't he get cut? And then it, feels, to, it, was, it was Gilmore, yeah. It feels like uh, this is a new move. Is that what's happening here or no? I, I don't think this is a move because it actually – I know people think that, like, you floated out there to to force – you know, to create a trade. But people knew uh, – I think people knew Amari's days were sort of numbered. It doesn't help because if you're going to – if you really want Amari Cooper, you might say, you know what, if they're going to release him, we'll just wait. Um, so once the news hits they're going to release him, it actually makes trading him harder. You better – it's better to do it kind of behind the scenes – you know, kind of whispers and, and, you know, maybe you could theoretically fake that there's like a huge market and get a trade. So it actually doesn't help anyone to have this news out there. I'm sure Amari's not thrilled. I'm sure the Cowboys aren't thrilled. And uh, the only people happy are the teams that, you know, may have wanted to trade for him because the market gets depressed a little bit. Yeah, and I always wondered how that was a good negotiation move because if you're going to cut it, why would you pick up a $20 million salary if you know you could potentially get him in the free market, which would happen if he was released 27 years old. Oh, who's that? Oh, here Who we is go. It? Is that Mike McCarthy? Roger. It is not Mike McCarthy. We're good now. You got you guys got me now. Um, it's an yeah, uh, unnamed source who uh, oh. is trying to – how much of that, how much gossiping this week have you done? Have you learned anything about any of the outstanding stories? Do you feel like there is some real headway being made in Indianapolis for the offseason here? I think so. Um, it's been a lot of talk about the quarterbacks. You know, a lot of talk about who's going where and what's happening with Aaron. And, you know, we've talked about that. I feel like that's in a pretty good place right now with the Packers. He hasn't announced anything, so nobody wants to do anything until he, I assume, shows up on your doorstep and says he's ready to go. <laughs> Uh, when's that oh. happening? About? Wow, you listen, the internet told me it was supposed to happen on Tuesday. That didn't take and, place. Yeah. And the internet told me that Vince McMahon was supposed to walk in here and punch me in the face. That's that didn't it. happen. <laughs> but, I mean, uh, who knows with any of that? I assume you know more than we do. What what uh, What is going on with the Aaron situation? Everybody's just kind of waiting, thinking they could potentially get him or no? I, I, everyone's just waiting for him to announce. I mean, I feel like most of the teams I've spoken with, really most everyone believes he's going back. But... It's not like something I could say, you know, like sources Rogers expected to be back because he is he is a different dude and he is in charge of his own stuff and uh, he is he's charming and funny, funny, funny. He smart, also, he, he smart. also speaks to himself what? and he keeps stuff to himself. So it's not like he's told people, oh yeah, yeah, I'm definitely going back. From what I can tell, like there's been negotiations with his agent and the Packers. But he has not said, hey, I'm definitely going back when this deal gets done. Okay, so let's talk about uh, Gunta Kunz, I think, came out and said there's been no trade offers for Aaron. Does that mean like official trade offers or no conversations? What do you think? Is, it, is the devil in the details there? Just like whenever you tweet, well, there hasn't been the formal meeting yet. Oh. You know, like, is, that, is that what that is there? Is that a little gamesmanship there? Look, there's Gunta Kunz is telling the truth. I do not believe there's been a formal trade offer. And I don't think there's going to be one until teams know – there's something to trade for. Like if you're the, you know, I don't know, Tennessee Titans who Rogers allegedly, according to the internet, you know, bought a house in Nashville and maybe raw land. land. Raw land. Not, he brought raw, land. Raw, raw land. land. Raw land. AJ raw Hawk land. told us raw land. Details. Is that where? Is that near Nashville? Yeah, it's down in Nashville. I guess, I guess it's where all the super yups buy land down there so they can build Nashville. So the, AJ told, told us. There's a super yup. Does he know you talk about him like that? Well, he's got that cake. You know, I'm yeah. super yup. Like, you are that. I'm saying, like, born and raised that. But, like, I'm talking super yup money. I'm not talking Aaron, like, but the people who are in that realm. <laughs> that's what they do. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's fair. Um, so let's so. say, that, let's just say the Titans wanted to do something. There's no way they would make a trade offer 
because it would get out there. And then it's like, well, Tannehill's like, what the heck, guys? And, you know, so you're only going to make an offer if you know you're going to do a deal. So I believe Gutekunst said no one's made an offer. Uh, I know, obviously, there's interest. It's Aaron Rodgers, but it's kind of like anything else. Like, everyone's waiting to see what he declares. And then if he says, like, hey, I must get out or something, which would be a surprise, but um, then I think teams will be ready. Okay, so let's bounce around to some quarterback needing teams. Allegedly, the commanders called everybody. Including the headline out of fan side, it was commanders called chiefs to inquire about Patrick Mahomes. When, when then you go into the article, it's like the commanders have called everybody inquiring about everybody. Is that where the commanders are right now? They're just trying to see. They're in the quarterback market. And they want everybody to know, hey, we are looking. Carolina, Washington, they're Denver, I guess, also. Stillers. Stillers. Pittsburgh Steelers are in the market. Like, is, Colts, is, Colts. That, is that just them making the announcement, hey, I'm, we're in the game or what? The Indianapolis Colts. You're in Indianapolis Colts. Yeah, we got Aaron coming, though. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, now, that would be, you know, Break if he it. announced it from your studio, that would certainly be something. It would be. That's going to get us a strike, but you're in a very upbeat place. In South wow. South. Where are you? Whose meeting room is this? Uh, this is an undisclosed location. <laughs> JW Marriott. Yeah, you're in the JW Marriott in an undisclosed room in JW Marriott. I actually, I see, I see uh, meeting room 102. So, so you're literally giving us your exact place. No, yeah. go I'm get not him. There. That's across the way. Go get uh, him. So across the street. So you're 103, right across uh-huh. the street. Yeah. Um, um, or uh, 105. But or 101 somewhere. Right or 101. Yeah, you're the 101, 103, or 105, depending upon no, which way. No further comment. Anyway, what are we talking about? Quarterbacks. Super yups. Uh, so I, I do think Washington football or the commanders, whatever. I do think the commanders. Whoa, whatever. Calm down, rap sheet. Your problem, I do think dude. the esteemed commanders. <laughs> I'm going to give them a beer. A great name with a great logo. The crest thing was kind of a mistake, but everything else was fine. Um, the They are in the quarterback business, and I think they would like teams to know, like quarterbacks to know that they have a good team besides the quarterback. You know what I mean? Like, I think, and if you look, they got good young receivers, good offensive line. They got some playmakers on defense. And I think they're going to get better. They got a good running back. Like, I think they'd like people to know we are good and ready as long as we have a quarterback. And obviously, Fitz is not going back there. Played last year with Heineke. They need to improve. They are very much in the mix. Um, and I don't think they mind everyone knowing that. Okay, Russell Wilson says uh, he's doing an interview back in D.C. with J.P. Finley of NBC Sports Washington. Washington is D.C., not Washington State. He's from that area, Richmond, Virginia. He says all his friends, East Coast, saying, hey, come back. And he said, Seattle's where I'm at right now, and I love it. Okay, so that statement in and of itself. And he said, and he said, I want to stay on the West Coast because my family's there, which is like, I know that's not as strong, but that to me was something I noticed because, like, family runs the show in all of our lives, really. Um, that to me was significant. Okay, then Pete Carroll comes on and says, we're not shopping our quarterback. Is the devil in the details here? Because we're not shopping, but we're listening. This is where I'm at right now, and I love it. How come there's so much smoke about Russell Wilson when it sounds like from Russell and from Pete Carroll, that's not an option? Is that something that's going to happen? Like the commanders, are they potentially going to have Russell Wilson at quarterback? Or is Carson Wentz potential? Like, is Russell Wilson actually on the move, you think? I would say I don't think so, but I would not rule it out. Like, all those words are true. They are not shopping him. They have no intention to deal him. I think he'd like to be there. But as General John, General Manager John Schneider was quoted as saying early in the week to reporters, when people call, he listens. And he should listen. And he needs because that is because uh, that is his job, right? So when uh, when teams inquire, he needs to know what deal is it going to be and is it something worth it. But I will say – same thing about Russell Wilson I've said for the last year. Until we know it's a better quarterback for them, uh, I don't see him going anywhere because they are not a team that's going to rebuild. They're a team that is going to be ready to compete, and they need a quarterback like that. Are you going to break some news here soon? seems like you're getting a lot of calls uh, right yeah. now. Yes, yes. I uh, just had a secret meeting. I don't know if I mentioned that. And um, I had 44 messages during that Jesus. secret meeting. I have no idea what any of them say. Well, that's because uh, you're out there boozed up, blacked out, making deals and deciding you're going to do stuff. Drunk you is now making, or sober you is now making up for what drunk you promised. Mm-hmm. I don't know who's the star of this show, but I feel like drunk me and sober me both have uh, a seat at the table. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Okay. Uh, it is. Uh, it's good to be back. It's good to be back. Carson, <laughs> Carson Wentz gone. You think that's 100% happening? And how does that whole thing pan out? I don't know because I don't know who's Ooh. better. Like, that's – Who's better? Sick. Like, who? Like, you know, Deshaun Watson's not going. I'm not going to trade him in the division. You know, is Russell Wilson going to Indianapolis Colts? Like, I don't know that he's going anywhere either. Who is a better quarterback? You know, and like they met, I, and yeah, one, I appreciate Chris Ballard's uh, being so upfront with it, being so transparent. You know, he had conversation with Carson, met with his agent this week to tell him the same thing. Like they are open to improving. I just, I, I mean, like trying, I'm trying to figure out who it's going to be. Like, if, is it a free agent like, you know, Mitchell Trubisky? Is that an improvement? Wow. Would that make you happier as a Colts person? Hey, behind closed doors boozed up everybody at these bars Mitchell Trubisky the most sought after of the OG quarterbacks that are still out there yeah. I mean it's not a great market for quarterbacks you know you got you got Bridgewater um you got Marcus Mariota you got Trubisky but it does seem like he's the most sought after and I think he should be like I don't know what he's going to become but he had his moments he was a pro bowler if you're someone who believes in that I don't um he you know, by the end, the coaching was not very good. I, yeah, I'm fire. Um, so I think he at so least many. deserves a chance to cement himself as a starter. This guy's got 100 phone calls. Yeah. We appreciate you taking your time. Jimmy G going to be traded or not? Because that was he was getting traded. He said his goodbyes. This is just like uh, they don't know if Trey Lance is ready. You're saying Mitchell Trubisky is the OG that is everybody sought after. Jimmy G, not that guy that everybody's looking for or no? The shoulder really complicates things. Okay. I do think he gets traded eventually. I just don't know when. Like he's gonna have surgery next week. Does someone trade for him a week after major surgery, and he's not gonna be able to throw for sixteen weeks? Uh, sixteen weeks, he's not gonna be able to throw as a quarterback. Hey, what what happened? They thought they could rehab that thing without getting surgery, and they've just got to the point now where they have to get surgery. Yeah, have to get surgery, and you know, no one's happy about it. It's bad for literally everyone. Uh, <laughs> and I think it was. You know, worse injury than he realized. But it just, I, you know, he'd probably like to get traded. I know they would like to trade him. But, you know, you're going to give up a second rounder for a quarterback who you're not going to see throw until June? Like, I could, maybe closer to the draft after you've had, you know, maybe a month or so of, of rehab and you get some good medical reports. But by the start of the league year, I'm not so sure about so that. So that's a second rounder is what everybody's expecting for Jimmy G. Is that what that is? What's the market for everybody else, you think? Carson is way complicated. Like, I don't know if anyone will trade for Carson, but I'm sure it'll be partly salary dump as well as that. You know, Trubisky, you know, could he make $10 million? Probably. Um, you know, probably second or third for Jimmy G. Um, Somebody's got a good aux score. Yeah. I'm in the back. Aux score. <laughs> man, in, man, man, in, crushing. man, in, man, 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 I don't understand why they have to play music. Like, I don't need music as I walk the hallways or go into my meetings. Like, just Dude, don't play you're playing Creedence. Who doesn't love walking down a hallway? Some good Creedence clear, clear water revival. Well, and it's also just to wake you up because you've been so boozed up. Yeah. The music is supposed yeah. to bring hey, you a little rhythm. Hey, I was up at 8 o'clock today. Sure. Uh, baby. Really? Yeah, when did you guys sleep? Six? Mm -hmm. No comment. Wow. wow, shut it down, Raph. I was productive, though. I was very productive. Absolutely, you. a lot yeah. of handshaking. Now, of I know you have a lot going on. we got a couple more questions. Go ahead, Tone. Uh, Ian, you said Mitch is the like the highest riser as far as free agent quarterbacks. As far as the guys coming out of the draft, it seems like Malik Willis has the most steam behind him this week. From people you're talking to, is that the case? It seems like Kenny Pickett is probably the most NFL-ready okay. and you know, probably the, the quarterback that most guys think is the top prospect. Malik Willis had a really nice day yesterday. He's very smart, 32 on the Wonderlic, and he impressed teams in the interviews. Um, I had 35, but 36. it seems like Kenny Pickett is probably number one for now. And then Corral's going to throw at his pro oh, day, yes. and I'm sure throw very well. Yeah. And I'll be curious to see if he sneaks in there kind of as the top guy. too. It's a weird quarterback year, so you're going to get ratings kind of all over the map. For different teams i think you told us this last week like the teams that need quarterbacks will go through free agency they won't get a quarterback then all of a sudden these young draftable yep. quarterbacks will just skyrocket in importance is that what's going to happen and is like everyone tells me like oh you know kenny pickett will be there at 20 for like the steelers if they want him and maybe 
But like, I'm not so sure about that because Ooh. you know what happens. Everyone's like, oh yeah, just wait, just wait. And then he gets to like 12, 13, 14. You're like, can't wait, got to get him. So they all get overdrafted because it's like, if you're a team who wants to wait until 20, 22, 24, whatever, isn't it worth giving up a fourth rounder to move up and make sure you get him? Of course it is. It's a quarterback. It's worth whatever you pay. Well, and then also, you could just be Bill Belichick and the number three overall pick somehow falls right into your lap. Bingo. And he <laughs> becomes a guy. And he's wins. Becomes your the next 15 years. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. – I mean, 20, you would hope bro, that would potentially have. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, Rap Sheet. Uh, James Winston, what's his deal? Are teams interested in him, or is he possibly just going to go back to the Saints on a cheap deal? He could go back to the Saints. I know there's interest there. Um, and I think he liked it, and they liked him. He's not – you know, he's not perfect, but um, there's was... there's something there, man. Like, he had his moments. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes back to the Saints. Teddy Bridgewater, another possibility there, too. Hmm. Um you know, they don't have a ton of money, but they could do some sort of incentive-laden deal and, and figure that out. That's that's not a bad look for Jameis going back. What's the breaking news you're about to break right now? Uh, because Zito had eyes on your watch whenever Diggs was asking <laughs> questions. He said, long text just came through. What is it? Are you getting yelled at by the wife? I have no idea, but I'm very... I'm excited to find out. <laughs> All right, we'll get some waters, maybe an ibuprofen or two, an IV. What? Get your life what? back together and continue to pound the pavement. We appreciate you. All right, take care, guys. Always fun. Oh, yeah. well, Get back and enjoy this music. All right. It's not always fun. Let's <laughs> yeah. yeah, all right. All right. <laughs> this guy. He's kind He's of a clown. Busy week for Ian. Did you hear him? I was up at 8, thank you. Yeah, He's exactly. Like, well, if you're up. No comment on oh, when he went to bed. Up, yeah. Well, I could tell by him right now. Like, yeah, he was up at eight, but he was still riding high from the night yes. before. He yeah. never went to sleep. He's still a little boozed, and now this eleven o'clock, he's starting to hit the wall. Yeah, this is whenever the sobriety and the hangover starts. Correct. Right. Yeah, I like, saw him pre-show too, watery eyes. So he was throwing up. Well, well, I am the big thing is, <laughs> is what you can't be drunk all day. You don't start in the morning. Correct. Exactly. Oh, yeah. So he's going to get an Irish Dog coffee hair. as we speak, and he can't be hung over if you're drunk. Right. Exactly. That's kind of the mindset. Not of hung over. Just tired from being up all night drinking yeah exactly mm -hmm. bingo these lines have all been repeated to me <laughs> and i've actually said them before but that guy's network i'm excited to hear what that whole thing is about that he was getting blown up there has to be something going on well, go ahead and there's so many storylines too totally. like there it could be uh, any number of things whether it's the combine or these quarterbacks can we talk about that after you're drunk hungover period sure. where you're very emotional sure oh, okay because oh, yeah. yeah. this happens to all of us. Oh, of yeah. course. What are you gonna, what are you no, no, say? no. Because, yeah. you know, you get drunk, and then the next day, you're still a little buzz. You're buzz. You go to brunch, maybe. Mm -hmm. And instead of opting in to get drunk again, you kind of come down, and then you get, like, you know, emotional a little bit. You start yeah. thinking about it. Did I offend anybody last yes. night? Did I say anything I wasn't supposed to say? Yeah. Man, I'm really enjoying it. Last night was so much fun. I'm lucky to be here. You get in there. Tennessee Titans general manager had one of those <laughs> oh moments in front God. of all of us. That guy. And I have no idea if this guy's like sober or not. And I don't know. Like, I don't want to put this on anybody. I did that to Zach Efron. Uh -huh. And that oh, ended up yeah, backfiring. Yeah. As soon as I met Zach Efron, I'm like, oh my God, you had to tear this stuff. I should been sober like 30 days or whatever. I'm, okay, I'm a fucking asshole. I'm sorry, little guy. I'm going to move on. Mm -hmm. You're very handsome. The Titans GM. When he was asked about what went wrong, basically, and how, you know, the team and what he could have done better in 2021, he started tearing up and getting sad. Mm -hmm. And he paused for over 20 seconds when he was asked what he could have done. He knew this question was coming, mm -hmm. but for some reason he was in his feels. He was in his mind. This dude had to be hammered drunk the night before, <laughs> incredibly hungover, was in that state of mind where you're a little bit emotional, was asked about the team that he loves immensely. GM John Robinson via Jim Wyatt Sports, had a full, almost like, oh, yeah. real moment we all saw. I love that he cares that much. Mm -hmm. I love that he's that passionate. There's no way Vrabel sees that, though, and doesn't bury him for it. He had to have been in that hungover emotional state. Yeah, I assume actually Vrabel is the reason he was that That's hungover, was because they probably went out the night before, and when Vrabel saw it, although we probably thought, I bet Vrabel hates this, he probably understood because he made John Robinson drink 50 <laughs> beers, no less than 12 hours before. Hey, by the way, I like whenever somebody's that emotionally invested that they yes. get emotional about it. I don't Absolutely. think that's bad, but also, you're at the combine, you're going to have to answer fucking questions. What yeah. are we even... I think players are looking over like, oh, it's Sweet. Had to be that uh, hangover. Had oh, to. I love Had everybody's to. stage. We've all been there. We're back in six minutes with Mike McDaniel, new head coach of the Dolphins. Let's go. Wow. Wow. How about it? wow. We'll see you then for hour two. AJ Hawk will be here as well. I can't wait for the chat. Hopefully, Rappaport will sober up at some point. We shall see you in about five minutes. You're the best. Cheers.
today, flying down to Nashville, doing a podcast with the boy. Hey, let's hey, let's go. Go. Then obviously get smacked down tonight. I'll probably talk some shit to the crowd. Shit. Then we'll fly back home, watch Division Round Weekend. Let's have a day. Thank you, Bloomberg, <laughs> for the article. It was really nice spending 50 minutes with that guy. Is that all? I mean, I expected a little bit more out of that article, but... <laughs> these, these macaques are fucking incredibly intelligent, and they are ruthless individuals. She be your mama. Your Kai yeah. had a crew for her coup mm -hmm. to get to the top. Ain't nobody gonna come topple her after what they saw her just do. She just took out her fucking mom, dude. Someone from the nature reserve saying, hey, look, we're gonna have to go fucking put a bullet in you guys' head. We can't have these monkeys going yuck eight times. Yep, guy. Can you imagine if the other macaques get wind of this? There might be 2,000 macaques heading to this nature reserve. Hey, we go! Sports show shall begin right now. Yeah. Yakai said, fuck you, mom. Then takes out four, three, two, inevitably one. Get the fuck out of here. Have the greatest weekend of your life. Be a friend, tell a friend that Monday shit's gonna be bananas. That felt pretty good. See you all. Bye. All right, this is a Benny Ooh. White Challenge. Every one of these particular hot dogs that is sold today, the proceeds will be donated to further brand. Betty White loved animals. Bunch of hot dogs for the dogs. Make sure you tell the boy that we said if someone doesn't sign the boy in the next two weeks, the boy is always welcome in New England, okay? And Pittsburgh. And Pittsburgh. Always. Yeah. I'm in my element, flow is like water, I'm forced through the fire, I'm feeling like gold. Gotta stay grounded, stay down to earth, following God and you grinding, you do as you told. I don't work to make you like me, but I'm front and center, word to Spike Lee. And God came in a nigga time, they think I'm crazy, but I might be. Let's run it or run it or run Welcome! Good to fucking meet you in person. Hey, teeth are whiter in person. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm fired up. Let's go, man. Let's go! <laughs> Look at you, dude! Did you see that Pat McAfee is on Bus with the Boys. You're kind of like a bucket list guest. When we started this thing, we're sitting on this bus. Like, Bus with the Boys, podcasting isn't in my mind unless I'm listening to your shit. You have a small part in that influence of all of this happening. It's cool as fuck that you're sitting here. AJ Hawk, AJ Hawk, AJ Hawk. I mean, I'm gonna be late. I think. Do your SmackDown, bro. And just like the macaque monkeys, the top of the pyramid can be shifted. He's the ABC owner! He's better! Back to the And you say stupendous! You better give it the proper accolades! I've been Googling, I've been searching! What is the proper definition of stupendous? Is that a dictionary? You're damn right, they still exist! Amazing, astounding, marvelous, astonishing, phenomenal, breathtaking, smashing, superb, fabulous, fantastic, tremendous, wondrous, monumental, mind-blowing, terrific, radical, colossal, dynamite, staggering. All of those words are the definition for one word, and that is stupendous. And social media, you and read also Monday night. Record-breaking, head of the table that runs the number one show in sports entertainment. Everybody in Thank the heavens for this jackass showing up. Someday. Someday. Yeah. We'll get there. We'll walk into any howl at the moon and go, Wish you were <laughs> dead from that ledge, my friend. Jumper. We Love could cut ties with all the lies that you've been living in. And if you do not want to see me again, I will not be ashamed. I'm going to do a howl at the moon. <laughs> <laughs>
just slide on the knees with the guitar. Uh -huh. How at the moon is just pianos usually? Uh, no, no, no. no. You wouldn't get it. The Pat McAfee Show. There'll be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope, nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show doing? starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Hey, welcome back to that show. It is Feel Good Friday, March 4th, 2022. I believe a living legend yeah. has joined us uh -huh. in studio. Uh, our yeah. two shall begin right now on this Friday. I have to hop on a bird to Miami for SmackDown this evening after this hour. Can't thank you enough for joining us. At Tone Diggs is here, one half of the hammer. Done! Cowboys, he looks fantastic in his cowboy hat, matching his hoodie. Joining us in an attic in Ohio. Super Bowl champion, college football national champion, COVID survivor, all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, AJ Hall is here. Yeah. Oh. Had a baby AJ. Look like Steve Jobs again. You look fantastic. Nice. And at the toxic table, we have Boston Connor uh -huh. and the new head coach for the Miami Dolphins, the man that is tasked with turning that franchise into a winner again. Bubba Gumpino's in the back is a diehard member of the Finn fam community. Ladies and gentlemen, graduate of Yale, football IQ on a thousand, Mike McDaniel. Yeah. 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 Woo! Woo! Bro. Up, dude. This is phenomenal. Thank you. No, you're happy phenomenal. to be here. You're phenomenal. No, no, this is. I'm gonna have to retire. So many niceties, all this hype. Yeah. And like, I'm zero win coach right now. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, Super positive time. This is a honeymoon phase here. Everything's yeah. awesome. You're seeing everybody. John yeah. Lynch is talking positive about you with his right. ashes, and you're giving a hell yeah. Dude, yeah. Crushing interviews, crushing pre uh, press conferences. A lot of work's gonna have to go into place, but you deserve this, man. Congrats on the head coach. Hey, hey, well, coach. Thank you. No problem. Um, no, it is exciting as shit. I'm, I'm happy to be here. I'm excited to be. I mean, the only thing better than all this pu pump up shenanigans that you guys are giving me oh, shenanigans. is where your guys' show is at right now. Yeah, what does that mean? What are you talking about? I mean, started from the bottom. Now we're here. <laughs> what? Oh. Yeah. Huh? Mike Jones? Who? Yeah. That was, is great, it? that was a great moment. No, that's not him. No, we great. started from the bottom. Now we're here. Yeah. But you had that Mike Jones moment in a press conference. And I think that's where everybody kind of learned about you from is all the magical moments in these press conferences. We obviously did not know of your existence, I think, as a football world for a long time. Yeah. And that's because the Shanahan's, the McVeigh's, this young crew that you ran around with was getting all the hype. And then when your name kind of leaked into the head coaching circles, I think the Miami fans are super pumped. Mm -hmm. Somebody new, somebody young, somebody fresh coming in there with an offensive mind. At what point did you know, like, okay, it's my time to become a head coach now? Did it come out of nowhere for you like it did for the rest of us? Um, to a degree, that's layered. Um, yes and no. Uh, so uh, it's always been on my mind because I, I, I knew one in one way, shape or form, if I got the op, the worst thing in the world would be to not be ready for it. So th I, that would be something I wouldn't be able to live with. Got it. And and before, you know, you're ambitious to do it. And then guys that you're working with start getting them. And so it was just important to me to pay attention to what was in front of me. So like to witness it, because there's a lot of times you can get it, just get caught up in your own job and your own stuff. Um, and you have to do a good job to progress um, in your career. So you're focused on your job, but I was just doing my job while also paying attention and putting myself in their shoes. But that goes over time. It, 
unless I want to go crazy and think about the wrong stuff that you go, it's hard enough if you think about what you can't control um, for one day that can set you twisted. If I'm worried about what I can't control over eight years, I will be absolutely insane. Yeah. <laughs> and that's um, not you. And so that at some point I just stopped thinking about it. What was your job with the Niners? Run control. What does that mean? You just, well, um, I was, I started as I think a run game specialist. It's a great title. Right. It's, hey, by the way, great run game to have a great yeah. run. See the run game yeah. specialist. Yeah. Uh, no, um, I actually pick titles off of, like, in retrospect, whatever does well, then I jump on that title. <laughs> smart, smart. You know, it's just uh, you got to know people in PR and handle, you know, some bookkeeping. Um, but then, yeah, then I was run game coordinator, then I was offensive coordinator. Uh, and during, in that process, you're trying to win games, you're, you're uh, involved in some playoff runs, all these things. And so then I, I wasn't thinking about being a head coach at all. Although, as preparing for it is to answer the question in a very long, I hope this is a long show because you got nothing but time. Yeah. Hey, listen here, we don't give a fuck. No, nope. you can say whatever yeah. you want, however you want, whenever you want. I would like to learn a lot about you too, so I love more answers than less. Dude, let's deep dive. Hey, let's <laughs> here we go. You saw what I was doing out there, like CBD yeah. man. I'm ready to get yeah. you all the way. Whoa, up. bro. Whoa, bro. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're doing it right now, dude. I just took some stuff, and this, this guy's interesting. Yeah, <laughs> that's where you're at. No, you. Yeah, that's my profession. Right. I do that with every single day yeah. of my life. Yeah. Yeah. Well, double down. <laughs> I will actually. <laughs> As AJ, AJ's going to ask you the next question. Go ahead, AJ. AJ. Hey, what's up, Coach? I appreciate you, you being there. I wish I was there in the studio, but I'm, I'm curious about your first combine experience as a head coach. How's it going? Is it fun, stressful, like too much? Like, what are you doing? No, it, it's – I mean, it, it, it's corny. It, it the is whole combine is corny. It right? is a privilege mm -hmm. to be able to do things um, as a head coach. So um, it is more tiring – there are different responsibilities. I have to talk to people, <laughs> and they and they listen to what you say. Bingo. And then if you, you say the wrong thing, they go, "Oh, you're effed." <laughs> you know. So I mean, that's different. But um, and, and yeah, and people know it, knowing you that you don't know. Um, I don't. I'm not. I don't carry hand sanitizer, so I think I just travel germs across. Oh, nice. all the handshakes. No. Hey, we beat COVID. Yeah, NFL, no NFL certainly beat COVID. Exactly. So, the yeah. NFL doctor said so no more time. protocols. We beat it. We did Bro. it. We did it. We did it. We, yeah. Look at us. Fucking Bro. Did it. Bro. Oh, we did it. We did yeah. it. Not everybody. Obviously, it was yeah. uh, devastating, and and a lot of people were alive. But we did it. We made it to that Man, point. Man, this. Uh, Good for us. You yeah. know? Great for Hard us. work, determination. Bingo. Covering yeah. our faces. Kind of blinders yeah. on, too. Yeah. We, we stayed straight. We stayed the course. Obviously, we never got off path no. at all no. as a people. And, and um, no one sneezed in public ever. No. Which is great. No. I just read that stat. Well, hopefully it never <laughs> happens again, by the way. Yeah. That's forever. Yeah, we just cut sneezing out. Yeah. That's, That's awesome. not can't do it. That'll save us. But yeah. what I think AJ was talking about is the head coaching oh, role. Yeah. The head coaching role, though, has a lot yeah. more bullshit with it, right? And is that what you're experiencing no, now or I, not yet? Okay, so that's what people say. That is the narrative. Yes. Is there is more BS because you're you're getting that job doing stuff that isn't you're doing stuff in the job that you don't do before. So I think that's what people label as BS. Um, I see all this extra stuff that you do that isn't football is something that's a necessary, I wouldn't even say evil, but for the phrase necessary evil. You get it back for Because it. you know what? Um, I want to coach football and make money and have a living. Okay, well, how does that work? Well, People have to like pay to watch. Okay. Um, there needs to be functions, maybe like in a random warehouse with basketball hoops and stuff where you can talk <laughs> about it. Oh, you're talking about right here. Media. So they need to talk. They need access to the team. All these things are like, like you can't have your cake and eat it too. If you want to be paid in this profession, you have to have an audience. That audience, if you want it, the more you want it to be successful, you need to give them something to think, think about, talk about, whatever. And there needs to be somebody that's in charge of talking to, uh, for the franchise. So 
Yeah. <laughs> and you're the guy. Yeah, hey, you. let's go. Come on. Come hey, on. No, it's, it's like at a, um, I don't know, some concert. Or... You. Yeah. That's what I feel like. So, um, <laughs> yeah, no, no, it, it's, it's, it was, and specifically, um, so I don't think it's like, I wouldn't label it as BS. It's weird because I'm an, like today, I'm an amateur at this. And like you're crushing though. I mean, oh, you're much different than everybody else. And I think that is something that made a lot of Dolphins fans super excited. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of coaches, they view all that extra BS because they don't get the grand scheme of it. And just for sake of metaphor, the devil's in the details. I believe you look into that. Whenever you said immediately upon meeting Tua, it felt like he was a guy who is definitely better when you empower him and let him know that he's yeah. a guy. For the last two years, I've been on this show screaming like the mental toughness of what Tua ha has had to go through these last couple of years. Now, there's a lot of other litigation and accusations happening within the building that will all get settled and everything like that. But I think this is the first time we've heard anybody say, hey, two is a guy, and we want him to be a guy. At what point did you realize, like, hey, this is how we're going to operate with the human that is Tua, as opposed to just a player? And do you think that's like the modern new school thinking, like, hey, this is a human first as opposed to just a player? Yeah, I think, um, I think one's the exception, one's the rule. I think the exception is... Um, probably ch um, making people prove to you that they're good enough. I think that's kind of the exception. Um, I think for the most part, the rule is people need support, especially now with all the spheres. We're making the most money we're making in the industry collectively, right? Yes. Um, because there's more access, um, there's more voices, you know, there's um, narratives set by, hey, I think this, blah. And, and, and you have to answer for that. So that pull down, just on a, a human psyche, um, there's a ton of pressure. You know, I know stories of players um, after a game walking into the locker room and immediately going to Twitter. So the stuff that players are wearing on a day-to-day -day basis, the pressure has evolved a little bit, you know? And then you go through the psychological scope of scrolling stuff, search your name or something, and there's 15 good things and three terrible things, and how people's mind might not even see it. So all of these factors, to me, I think um, people need assets. People uh, need vision set sometimes. Um, there are, uh, you know, I don't know the percentage exception of the rule, but like, I could, I could tell, dude, you're a top 10 dra draft pick. This just in, you want to be good. <laughs> <laughs> Breaking! And you feel that other people are like, yo, be good. Yeah. <laughs> and so like, you got to put yourself in people's shoes and like identify with that. Wow, that must be tough. Okay, you take in all this stuff and... And like, all I know about the kid is that he's genuine as all get out. He's a hard worker and he has um, certain talents that um, are, are, are unique to the position that, and I see, I see all this stuff that I can, it, from the vision of, okay, we, we can work with, he's in the club and oh wow, He's been doing, what if he's confident while being in the club, the prerequisite club of the talent that you need to play the position and being uh, a top starter of the NFL. He's in the club, so then where can we take him from there? That's, that's all I see my job as. And all that other stuff is, I don't know, juggling nonsense. Like, I, I'm, I'm a coach. Yeah. So I need to coach him. What do you think you're going to do with the offense? What are you going to do to change and make Tua better? Have you gotten so, into that? This is very early in the whole process, uh, and you're shaking no. hands, kissing babies right yeah. now, and you're a zero-win head yeah. coach that everybody zero loves. Zero wins. Zero win. <laughs> but what, what are you thinking about that for Tua? How do you make him better? Um, we're going to start with scoring more points than the opponent. Wow! Holy shit. Oh, no. Uh, you are changing the game. Changing the game. <laughs> yeah. Through math. Yeah, that's uh, right. No, I think um, there's I, – I, I was just so fortunate in, in my career to be around 
the, the process of how I look at things with, with the empowerment of the right teachers that I, I look backwards forwards. Okay. Um, what things do I see that are really awesome about his game on tape, even though we're at... Hey, it's he's a, accurate as hey. Boom! He, he, that's he, what I was just about to say. Oh, I didn't know. I, I was just, I, I just... You were leading me. That's how, You should do this, maybe. Dude, think about it in the yeah, future. Dude. But you, he's or we so should, accurate. Or we should just spend the time finishing each other's... Sentences. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, did, did, have we known each other for... Our whole lives? <laughs> oh, my God. You tell... Me? Wow. This is weird. Yeah. Whoa, it seems like you guys just that. became. Dude. Wow, this is fucking weird, AJ. Bro. Hey, this is... Did we swap skins? <laughs> no. Wow, well, we learned a lot about yours, by the way. I mean, yeah. that was that very... Did you enjoy that entire conversation about, you know, you're incredibly light-skinned, and that was an entire conversation that happened? So I, I am the palest oh. of pale. But that was an entire conversation no, about my fa- No, my absolute favorite thing is to devote and dedicate myself to a profession. And then in the moment of truth, make sure all conversation about me has nothing to do with my merit of the profession. I would prefer you just to talk about like random things like, dude, who does this dude look like? Or like, bro, like he doesn't look the way he should look. You know, that's that's what I'd prefer. <laughs> <laughs> so he's very accurate, though. No, no, because what, what ever, everyone doesn't realize is all that narrative is like, distracting people so that like when football comes they're like oh he can coach this is awesome you know so it's a bunch of distraction technique that all the population is doing against themselves Tua is unbelievably accurate okay in and in in a ton of situations not just um in rhythm uh where number one's open but in progressions and off the spot And so I see that, and then I look at, okay, what can we do um, systematically where the things that we've learned from working with the immense amount of quarterbacks that we've worked with, um, how can we take take that accuracy and benefit it into offense? And um, that's the starting point then goes to the next step that I don't just say, hey – Here's all my cards, um, but that—that's where my brain goes, <laughs> and and that's what as an offensive staff we talk about. And then we talk with the personnel department about how do we, how do we, what's the best way to accentuate something like that, and that that is one of the things that jumped off the tape to me, and um, I, I'm very aware that dude is in six offenses in six years or coordinator. There's some crazy stat, and like. We need to teach him a new language, which is th- that offense. But I think been fortunate enough to bounce around to a bunch of teams that uh, – Yeah, it seems like you care about how he's going to take your coaching. Like that, that's, I feel like that's going to be something well, that two well, is going to love. And well, that, yeah. This is the coach to player. Now, you were, you were able to, for the most part, and I don't – but it, there's a little independent contractor in, when, when you're, you know – doing shit first team all pro style Whoa, hey, you know what i mean hey, just like, kicking balls just saying hey, hey, hey. but like thank you for that by the way but like, research i mean you uh you you rattled our cage when i was in Cle- one year in cleveland 2014 um i believe travis you put uh travis benjamin's brain into a fuck, oh. into a cycle yeah it was <laughs> windy said, as shit then. oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it just he spin cycled his brain yeah, yeah. had to you know <laughs> r- ruining players confidence one game at a time <laughs> yeah oh, that's yeah. what i in the media that's what i do yeah. now too in the media yeah. you know, that's what yeah. your job belittle is belittle me but, um <laughs> uh so what are we talking about I uh, know. Yeah, well, you're just you're awesome dude i think relating oh. to the player is why you're gonna oh, be able to yeah. teach him a new thing no the, like this is like a People need to. I find a, a grave importance and um, I don't know, responsibility and like something that I, I truly take pride in that I that I think um, registers with players along the walks of my career and that's like the the window to play is small and this is something they've been dreaming for their whole lives and so 
whether it's one year, two years, however long, when, when, when you're in charge of coaching a player, like understand that responsibility and what you owe to that player because this is their dream. So I'll be damn sure that anything I can control, that I'm not giving them everything I have with, with brain and whatever, and they, and they can feel that. And that was always like my thought process, like, yeah, okay, um, I could try to conform and, and do a style and talk like I've seen other people talk. And, uh, but no, it doesn't matter. And I wouldn't even know how to be authentic. I'm just really going to try to make you as good as you can be because I recognize like our relationship, case in point to a, like how good can we take, we take your, your play. That's all you're doing as a coach. And so do I want to sit here and predict, I'm not going to limit his expectations. I'm not going to put a ceiling on what he can be. I'm going to empower him and see how good we can get him and just and be comfortable, him and I, and the rest of the coaches and everything that, you know what, this is as good as we can get. But what you don't want is in hindsight be like, man, bro, if, I, if like we would have thought about it more or like worked harder or I would have cared, like – you know, you just don't have room for that. So that's that's not enough time. There's not enough time to do that in guys' well, careers and primes either. Right, and like that is a responsibility, man. This is this is their livelihood, and you can you can take that livelihood and put it into um, the wealth for the rest of your life for your family, or you can make it generational wealth, like when you punt sick footballs, and then you know start talking to the microphone. Just like, hey, you guys, want to hear me talk about? Punting? <laughs> oh, was, that, was, that, was that the first show? That was the first show, yeah. You guys want to hear me talk about punting? It did really well. You should have <laughs> Nobody else is doing it. We've evolved a little bit. We get the L conversations, stuff yeah. like that. But yeah, that was our niche. We really found it. But I think that whole thing about like caring about the player, they can feel it, right? Because they don't care about how much you know until they know how much you care. Like That's the old like bullshit adage, but it's a real thing. And I think especially with the modern athlete, the fact that you, the first thing you say about Tua is like, hey, I want Tua to know, like I want him to be great. Like immediately, I think Tua is gonna be much more open to what you have to say. And you're coaching the players, you're not coaching a playbook. And I think that is something that does get lost in it. You have a fascinating mind, dude. I'm sure you're told that a lot. AJ, has, this is another, this is the most toxic dude of all time, by the uh-huh. way. I'm excited to hear his thoughts. Wait, wait I just love that. Part of the intro was AJ in the attic. Yeah, that's where he is in Ohio. Yeah. It's, hey, it's a hey. This guy, number five overall pick, Mike. So yeah. we're talking palatial yeah. estate, Taj Mahal. Yeah. yeah. No, I wonder what. What do you think that room smells like? Cigars. cigars. He smokes fifteen well, cigars a day. You guys just said that in unison. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we're yeah. finishing we each other's sentences. Oh. It's oh. happening. It's it's there. It's right there. Hey, Coach, um, I think everyone loves how authentic you are, but I'm, I'm curious. Let's say a couple years down the road, sometime in your career, we know coaches have to get in press conferences and they ask them tough questions like, oh, hey, you guys are shopping. We hear you're shopping this player, and you got to you can't publicly say that or something, and you have to give the old football cliche like, oh, no, we love we love the player. We're not doing – like, how are you going to handle that, you think, in real time if you ever have situations like that, if they arise in a press conference, when you know, okay, I can't exactly say what our plans are? Um, that, that – it literally happens all the time. I'm really impressed that you haven't caught up, caught on to it, but like it happens all the time. Like I've gotten like a hundred reps of that. That that was like, especially um, the the first time you're exposed to that thought process is a weekly press conference during the season, because you are addressing, um, a, uh, in as a head coach, it'll be an entire team. Um, as an offense coordinator, you're addressing a team's uh, the questioning of a team's defense. So you do not want to give them headlines and make say, "Hey, yeah, we're definitely going to beat their ass." <laughs> um, so you have to give them their due, but then you also can't give in any information on what your plan is to attack them. Um, the the, I, the list is so long, I couldn't even know where to start. But um, what? I address people's questions um, with intention, but the the one thing about press conferences, the greatest thing is unlike this dialogue, is I quite literally don't have to answer the exact question. I could go on a tangent and just be like, and you know what? 
No, that's a great question, AJ. And that's why you got to have the right wood lacquer <laughs> for those bookshelves. <laughs> because, like, everybody knows the wrong lacquer, the wrong finish. Ah, uh, sure. Is it going to be shine or but, is it not going to be shiny? But that, and, 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 but I do recognize that, um, that, that question. It is, I, I'm, I'm actually, you kind of just gave me the biggest pat on the back that I've had because I, I, I think every press conference I end up having to do that in one way, shape, or form. But you're in charge of whatever, the, whatever comes out of your mouth. Um, and, and, I, and I think that's... Um, you got clean swag. I'm looking at your clean shoes. Clean swag? Oh, yeah. You see the watch? I already have them pulled up on my computer. My God. Oh, dude, what are the shoes there? What are they? They're Burberry. Um, He's got Burberry shoes. Bur He's a head coach now, dude. Yeah. This shit. Hey, good for you, dude. Yeah. Watch. So um, live a little bit, huh? You know what I'm No, doing? I... Uh, I'm a shoplifter. No! <laughs> I see the words that come uh, out of your mouth. They yeah. do matter. Uh, <laughs> hey, have you thought about what boat you're going to ride in when you guys have a boat parade? A what? Have you thought about what <laughs> boat you're going to ride in for the boat parade when you guys win the Super Bowl? Um... What? So I have options of boats? Yes. Mm -hmm. you're, you're fucking the head coach of the Dolphins, dude. Yeah. Wait, I... Consensually? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think the boat likes you dude, and you like the that, boat. How you said that? You're... Okay, um, so <laughs> any type of boat, you could go. I think I, I want a, an aggressive rower of a kayak. That was like a two-person <laughs> kayak. But a guy that was like out of control, you know, just really getting it all, you know? Yeah, yeah. fronts lifting up. Yeah, so, I mean. Are you going to have the, uh, who? Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess that's kind of the vision. No, yeah, I just changed the vision. It needs to be a multi-person <laughs> Tahitian style. Oh, right? oh, yeah. That'd be a quick boat, yeah. too, if you yeah. need it to be. I mean, that'd no, be it's kind of like my daily life now as a head coach where so many people are working, and I'm like, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, no. no. <laughs> yeah, same page. Um, yeah. I knew one was coming. Wow. Yeah, no, Can't say yes to everything, dude. Dude. AJ's questions just keep me on tangents. I'm sorry. Have you ever, uh, did you, this guy was a fucking meathead of all time, AJ. Uh -huh. this did guy. I? Uh, yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> this dude, this dude was a striker. Um, he liked pictures of himself. <laughs> he sent that in. No, they, they, they sent that to us. Look at his hands. <laughs> Check out the hands. Dude, you played post, you played post 2012. You were HD. What, what is going on here? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, his hands, yeah, I don't know what happened. <laughs> Dude, these all get sent to the office. These yeah. are all things that get sent to the office. It looks like you, uh, you just you went to tanning beds for a decade and just put your hands in. <laughs> well, that is potentially yeah. something that did. <laughs> no, nope, hold uh, <only> my hands. <laughs> uh, I might start that. Those are his actual hands, by the yeah. way. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, it's coming together. I think. Striking fear <laughs> into uh, every time. Every time you shed a blocker. Are you a super fear. film nerd? Yeah, love film. Enjoy film. Like because all these old school coaches. Yeah. Me and AJ talk about this. We would never get into coaching ever because the amount of time it is. You got to like desk watch. You got to watch this film. If you're not watching this film, somebody else is. But it feels like all the people that get into coaching are natural film nerds. Is that what you how you would describe? No, yourself? I think that's something that's carried over from old school coach to whatever this generation is, is that um, there's, there's literally no shortcut and it's all through film to me. Oh, so you're a grinder in the film room. Yeah, and I think anybody that is attempting to be like, like me, like I'm attempting to you know, win a football game as a head coach, um, since I have zero, um, but I have you're zero losses. Too. Yeah, you're undefeated yeah. too. Yeah, um, that's not good but crazy. as you attempt to be a, a, a good coach, there, it, it's not the path of least resistance. It's quite the opposite, and it's deliberate practice at watching film. And there's no shortcut, and it's every week for four plus months in a row to the face, um, and like there's nowhere to hide. So t guys that don't like to watch film, it catches up. It's non-negotiable to me. So, but you can also tell um, in the coaching community, um, guys that watch a lot of film, mm. you know, you can't, you can, they, because it, it's, it's literally everything. You have the keys to the test, the test being like, Hey, you need to have meetings with players with information. Okay. 
what should that information be? Should it be a PowerPoint slide that's like, hey, I'm going to entertain you. This is what we're going to do today. Or, or should it be a saying? Or should it be tangible film evidence of the opponent or yourself and then take it a step further? What if you can take the information that you want to present and you can put it in a cut-up that tells a story to keep the attention of said player to engage them to teach them a point because the best learn learning and teaching is like linear like a story right so that's how people remember stuff so and every time you show them film you tell a story through the order of the plays that you have <laughs> and then now you have an engaged um a player who's actually getting something out of the meeting all of that can only happen if you have unbelievable access uh, i think um just leaving San Francisco, um, Mike Nolan, uh, our video guy, or um, uh, what did I say? Mike, Mike Nolan. Mike Nolan. Oh, I said the coach. Yeah, Nolan was not the video My, guy. No, I said the coach that wears the, he wears the suit, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you yeah. gonna do that? Have you thought about what you're wearing on the sideline? Huh? You look cool on the side. You're gonna look cool on the side. I know. I was just gonna. I was just gonna do um, a netted vest. <laughs> That'd be sick. sick. That'd be sick in Miami too. Oh, yeah, wow. breeze, bro. <laughs> Shirtless. Um, I know. Get a tan. Um, Headset on, netted vest, mm -hmm. nothing under. Anyway, it was, I was talking about Mike video. Nolan. Video, you have any coach. access to the video? Oh no, oh, uh, sorry, I, I got I digressed because of my misnomer. But anyway, vi video, Mike. We're going. We're um, he's coming up to me. He's like, yeah, we have all these cut ups that you've made in your five years in San Francisco from Mike from San Francisco. All Mike's involved. So Mike from San Francisco is sending Mike McDaniel's cut ups to Mike. <laughs> In, in Miami. Miami. And he's like, all right, well, we have an issue. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, it's a lot of clips. And I'm like, what do you mean? He was like, yes, it's um, 891,000 cut-ups. Jesus. No problem. What? That's but, what you've been through. But the, it's because, so you watch a bunch of tape, and the, you know, there's plenty of coaches that, that would have a number like that, but like, that's the amount of, times I've said, okay, there's a play worthy of making an edit that I want a little teach tape of. And you watch all this film, you have access across the league, and you can fit it to, you can, you can show players why everything you want that you're coaching, every coaching point you've ever said. Everything you're asking them to do makes everything, sense. Everything, you can say, I'm saying this, this is what it looks like, here's why. In a story, all the time, it's the most powerful teaching tool, and it's the end-all, be-all for any good coach um, if they're trying to um, prove their worth. Or Win a game it. in the NFL, even though they're which, undefeated coaches, which bro. is what you are right now. And whenever you think about being a wide receiver at Yale, Yale is not easy to get into. Now, granted, I've heard – you know, you could just pay somebody coming yeah, to the side door. Exactly. I watch the entire – you could be on the road team. You could be a wide receiver on the NFL. Yeah, yeah there's – there's this admission scandal that happened. Will that be? <laughs> have you always been super high IQ human? Is that something that you like? Photographic memory? Uh, super? Like, what do you think you would describe your intelligence? As? Um, I don't know where the level of intelligence. Yeah, oh, it's is. fucking high. All right, yeah. so just no, stop I just there. yeah, you, isn't it AJ? It's why Ohio. He went to Ohio State. No, dumb, yeah, dumb. West a, Virginia, <laughs> Harvard or West Virginia, dumb though. Like no. you want the Yale. Like okay, this actually gets you in conversation. I think you. I don't know where I'm at with that. I think <laughs> I have, I think I have a a will that's pretty crazy, like a controllable. I I, th I think I have enough prerequisite IQ um, that I'll let other people define. Um, as long as it's to my liking, and <laughs> yeah, of course, <laughs> no. narrative. Your um, eight hundred ninety-one thousand clips. <laughs> no, but really, uh, I think it's like I have a a will and a fearlessness that. So then I work at stuff and um, set huge goals, and I think that is smart to do. You wrote that thing, and what I'm was not, that? High school was that thing in high school? Resume. You wrote Col that? college. And yeah, you said, was, "This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this. I'm yeah, gonna do this. that's awesome." And, and so. I think back to the, I had this great story. I'm not sure. If, if you've heard it, tell me to stop or throw. You have a shoe? Throw yeah. a shoe? Yeah. You can find one. You have a, a shoe throw? Yeah, I I'll throw a Lesnar blend. Okay. Um, so I'm in third grade. Yeah. 
I didn't hear it. I just want to throw something. <laughs> Nobody's ever said they wanted to throw something. Good reflex. Yeah, pretty good. good. You're quick. Bro. I have to yeah. suit up. That was, was left-handed. I'm a righty, No, too. that was, what's the bullet movie? Wanted. Uh, Angelina Jolie. See? Yeah. Shakes yeah. that yeah. That's what it felt like. I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You're a Matrix guy. I could see that. I, and by the way, mm-hmm. left-handed, pretty good accuracy. Though, I right? know. Yeah. Yeah. But we hadn't heard a story. Third grade. Okay, so third grade, um, and my <laughs> only child, right? And mom is like, yeah. Uh, as a kid, like you're, dude, you're awesome, and I'm like, really? <laughs> that feels good when you say that. This kind of is full circle with the how. Yeah. Co- anyway, so and in third grade, and we have the multiplication test that's like timed, right? You have sixty question, whatever it is. It's on one sheet, and you have, and it's set timed. Yep. And I wanted to get a perfect score and be the best. And there was this girl, oh. Stephanie Call. Okay, she had red hair, and she was over five feet. Whoa! Which that was insulting to me (laughs) as a boy. Yeah, in third grade. Third grade. You are too tall to ride the roller coaster. That's right. Mm -hmm. And she's probably smart. Um, But I knew she was smarter than me. I knew it for a fact. But then I had this thought in third grade. I was like, you know what? Um, What if I just convinced myself that I'm smarter than her? Mm. What if I just no? I'm gonna beat her, and just that conviction and will to that, and I'm not sure if it's correlation causation. I beat her on the test, and it clicked. How about? Let's go, it. dude! Congrats, it, by the way. Yeah, Stephanie yeah. Call is gonna beat your I ass. I know. Like she's smart. What are you doing, Stephanie? <laughs> right Smart now, ass. Yeah. huh? Um, coach but the team. but that I think was a life lesson that's carried me through everything, and I don't know. Um, to answer your question, I don't have a real good feel if I'm that smart. I don't know where that is. Yeah, but you just made the decision. But but I I was smart enough in a certain way to understand that that is the game that people aren't willing to play. And if you do it fearlessly and you don't care if like for me, it doesn't matter if I get to the end game because if I chase it, I'm going to get my highest. If I believe that I can do it. And most people aren't willing to play that game, man. That because is- it's because yeah, failure sucks. But then you fail, and then you're like, hey, I'm alive. Okay, maybe I'm tough enough. You know? Yeah. And yeah. I think making that decision, by the way, to go for it is something that not a lot of people are able to and do. And that, and that, I think is that's. A, I don't know what that. I think that's smart, but I don't know how smart I am. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Common sense, but right. not so common. Really, it's just an ability yeah. to uh, convince yourself that you're right. supposed to be able to accomplish things that most people aren't, like beating Stephanie. Right, yeah. and then, so I told this guy, I met him, I was like, hey, what's your name? Okay, Socrates, okay? <laughs> All right, Socrates, the only thing I know is that I know nothing. And he was like, I'm you're right. right. I'm going to write that down and take credit for it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Socrates did that? Yeah, and then I got back in the time machine and then <laughs> came back. That's how it played out. By the way, I would love to have a conversation with you about time machines and everything like yeah. that at some point. That'll have to be Is that a thing? Well, that's interesting because, like, you see people like Elon Musk and, like, Matt Groening with The uh, Simpsons is able yeah. to have 20 to 30 very exact predictions as jokes. I mean, you have to dive into all those types of questions. You want to yell. You've probably been in some backdoor conversations no, that it, we have not been a part of. You know of. what blows my mind? Can you guys answer this for me real yeah, quick? Okay, sure. So the movie Back to the Future. Okay. 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 All right. They go, they go to the future, right? You know, hence the title. Mm-hmm. Um. In the future, they have hoverboards and all this stuff. They have whatever the things are. Anybody notice that there wasn't a cell phone? Oh. Huh. This is in 1985, and the conception of the cell phone wasn't hitting. I mean, they had all these all these ideas, right? So, like, mind blower. Twenty. What is it? Twenty years. Whatever. Okay. Oh, yeah. Somebody. Anybody know math here? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Pretty good. I mean, so then all of us, but the, now they're a fixture in our lives, but we couldn't predict that was going to be the case, whatever, 30 years ago. So what is in front of us? Oh, maybe the Dolphins win the Super Bowl. Whoa. Nobody would have predicted that. Maybe the Dolphins win the Super Bowl and then 
all humankind evolves to have fins. Whoa! That'd be sick. Hell yeah. Fins to the left. And then what are, we, what are we saying back there? Hell yeah! We're saying fins up. Fins up. Hell yeah. Hey, Gumpy has a question for you actually in the back. He's been a diehard Dolphins fan his entire life, by the way. From yeah. Canada. From Canada. Northeast or Northwest Canada. Didn't go to Yale. Worked at a shipyard for 15 years. We fucking need you, Mike. I've the been, shipyard? Been, I'm 36 years old. <laughs> <laughs> no, I... <laughs> You're picking the. I mean, <laughs> I, I can will myself, there but you there's go. not. I, hey, you know, we haven't won a playoff game since 2000, Mike. Yeah. If not now, then when? No, I, um, we need you. No, we you, need you bad, pal. You, you, you say you say that, and um, that I think the second day I went in the I toured the facility or like had a had a whole deal where I introduced myself um, to the people within the building, the, the people that worked at the stadium. Equipment managers, ticket people. Yeah, uh, and, what? you know, this was my seventh franchise, and it was crazy because it was just overwhelming how these people, you know, generally you don't have success and they're jaded or they're agenda-based. There's just a bunch of people that were trying to do their jobs well. and And then on top of that, they were, you know, just looking, looking at all these people that were accountable for the right reasons. And then I'm putting, I'm wrapping my head around all this, like, oh, there hasn't, they haven't won a playoff game in 22 years. And all these people are working this hard. Oh, and this fan base is thirsty. They're eager. Wow. Let's just, like, how awesome is that feeling to chase that one that first time you win a playoff game, oh. what would be more valuable than that? Because there, it, not only would it be fulfilling, but the perspective and the appreciation, and and I mean, I promise you that it's not going to like the team is going to know that and be well aware of that. And I think it's important to put yourself there and understand what you're doing for the days that you don't feel like doing stuff, but like that it. The 22 years is not lost. That that is on the forefront of my mind, and I take. Um, it, it's really cool to be embraced by um, some of or most, whatever that of the of the the fan base. It's really cool, um, be and and fully knowing that you know after two losses, I know I've been in this league 17 years. I know the deal. Um, but right now, I really honor and cherish that that the, that they buying in. But like, like that's that's all I'm, the pressure I'm putting on myself and the coaches, and we're all going to do it together. And and the the whole building's in concert because it's meaningful for so many different reasons. Um, and and it's quite possibly I feel like I've won the lottery in in that regard because that that's like my the my strongest professional ambition it's right in front of me so um let's go see what i got hey you willed yourself to this moment now you're in here let's go ahead and win some games for yeah. the fins community hell yeah, hell yeah. i want to let you know you they, i mean they deserve it they deserve it and um the, there's a bunch of people in the building that uh, ironically as a head coach i'm it's the least amount about me than it's ever been because your job as a head coach is the service you have the power to do stuff so you can service everybody and empower them and then as a team we do it together which everyone got into football in one way shape or form they felt team they like team you know it's not tennis it's you know nothing against well, doubles doubles yeah true um, but, but but tennis very isolated. Golf, so, golf so is another one. That that that's what's real cool. I think, and I think the the building feels that, and um, everybody knows it is what it is. Like this whole conversation of, I knew this. Uh, I've been talking about it, whether people like me or didn't like me. Oh, who is this guy? Okay, let's have a bunch of information who this guy is because we just realized his name a couple months ago, and then at some point. Oh yeah, we don't play a game till September. So, at some point, that conversation is going to fizzle, and that that is what it is. And then the, you know we'll we'll overreact 
We win. Mm-hmm. We lose the first game. We Dude, I told you. Monday. We do a lot of that. We'll win. We but, that, but guess what? That doesn't bother me. That's what I expect. Okay, good. That's that. Every I get it. It's because people care. And guess what? They don't get. You can't do anything about it. I hate NBA games that I care about because I, I the fourth quarter I'm like. Ah, oh, dude, I get so mad when it's a tight game, and then it affects me in a weird way when the team that I want loses. Like, I what get, team do you want to win? Um, the Heat. The yeah, heat, no. the, heat the Heat is on. The Heat, the heat is <laughs> NBA favorite uh, other than football, basketball, NBA. Your yeah, favorite league? yeah, NBA is awesome. I, cliche, but there's a reason it's a cliche. Playoff sports in general, yeah. like. Um, you go zero. I go zero to sixty for me with baseball. Sick. Playoff baseball is Baseball's real dead. sick. Don't worry about it. It's dead. Yeah, it Never died. Again. It's dead. While you're doing your entire coaching thing, yeah, it's oh, dead. MLB's dead. Bro, sorry, I got to read Apple News or something. <laughs> yeah. It's dead. There's there's a war going on. Baseball's dead. Mm-hmm. I mean, NHL's happening yeah, though. Playoff hockey. Like playoff hockey. Playoff hockey's awesome. Yeah. yeah, it is. So it's still alive though. Yeah, yeah. Hockey's yeah. still. Hey, where's, where's, where, let's go, where, hockey. where's cricket at? Cricket's doing pretty good. What was that uh, old buddy's name? There's a guy. There's oh, a guy. Yeah. I, uh... No, I'm talking about the cell phone. <laughs> oh, they're dead. They weren't even in. Uh... No, no, Cricket's back. They're sure. with T-Mobile. They, they, oh, I think yeah. they were with T-Mobile. Okay, now th- this joke just turned real. <laughs> what? Yeah, I think Cricket uh-huh. and T-Mobile went together. I think. Oh Earth forces. man, God, the stuff that I find out in this in this space. Well, here's here's another thing you find out. What's that? I believe I'm like one of your biggest fans after mm-hmm. this because you came in here, didn't act like anyhow like anybody you thought you were supposed to act like. You've been yourself through this entire thing. You're very comfortable in your skin. The ability to flip a switch and will yourself to things that you want to mm-hmm. accomplish is one that all the greats in the history of accomplishing anything have. I can't wait to see what you do with the Dolphins. It's been 22 years. You got a guy a quarterback. Seems like you're empowering him. Can't wait to watch what you do in 305, pal. Holy shit, I flipped this thing <laughs> right. over. Are you giving motivational speeches in there whenever you're doing coaching and stuff like that? Or are you oh, just, yeah. Is that, what do you, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I mean. Like before a game, you're giving Oh, them. yeah, I think, yes. I mean, I, you give speeches for sure. I think it's important to have a relationship with, with your audience. And it's just like talking to, you and I are talking. Like, that's the really cool part about coaching. You assess the atmosphere and what people need to hear, and then you're prepared to deliver a message. And it's case by case. Like, I'm not, for the sake of rah rah, going to be rah rah, but I do have an adrenaline, like, momentum gate about me that when, it, when I'm talking football that you guys don't really get to see. Like if we were, if I was leading a meeting or conducting um, a speech to a team that, that was, that had to do with an ultimate goal. It's like one of my favorite things in coaching because there's like a, um, a message that, it, that, that you're able to, you know, it's communicating just like a conversation to a group of people and be able to have all that content to one listener, which is every listener, it, it's a it's a drain rush, say. bro. That's why I always say whenever people say, well, I don't know how you speak in front of everybody. It's like, well, each person only has two ears. You're mm-hmm. only speaking to one person at a time. It just so happens to be they're all together. So yeah. I don't understand how anybody's scared to talk in front of a group at all. If you can have a conversation with one oh. person, you can have a conversation with everybody because everybody, you're literally just right. talking one on one. That's exactly right. And and when push comes to shove, like worst case scenario, just move your mouth. <laughs> and, uh, and just see what comes out. <laughs> you well, you've done that a lot today, and everything has been great. We appreciate you for your time. I did not expect you to stay here this long. I don't think anybody did. Good luck at your first combine. Oh, the rest I thought of- I was living here. You can. can. Yeah. Sure. Can. Let's, oh, same page, by the way. Don't go in the bathroom, though. No, we cleaned the bathroom, asshole. Oh, man. Uh-huh. This guy's bad right. guy. No one ever lets me yeah. use any bathrooms. They trim their pubes in there. You don't want to go in. That's not no. true. That's not what happens. Yeah, it's, that it, happens. Thanks for the advice. I, that was a setup, wasn't it? They were trying to set me up. <laughs> yeah, they were. They were like, here, use this toothbrush, and it was going to be, you know. No, 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 no. <laughs> Move in. No pubes. Yeah. We got it cleaned. No, it's everybody. Movie. Yeah. Oh, th- I appreciate the, the look, because I was just about to get hazed. <laughs> no. no. Not here. We don't do haze in here. Dude. No, everybody. You, 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 I know what's going to happen. I'm going in the bathroom. You're like, No. Here, you always want to like check the toilet lit out before <laughs> you use the bathroom. 
I check it out. Somebody grabs my feet, swirly. <laughs> Don't get squirrely. No, no. We, we wouldn't do that. Maybe somewhere else, though. Keep your eyes peeled for that, obviously. Not this program. Yeah. Not this program. Mm. Not, yeah. It's nice to see what you do with That's you. not how we do things here. Not this program. We have, we have lines, Bingo. integrity, what? and boom. boom. What? what? Yep. Why? 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 How? Why? 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 Because why? you're saying stuff in a rhythm like bam, bam, bam. So we're saying why for you to go to the next one. That's why. Oh, see. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. That was, yeah. Um, that was above my head. Why? Um, because. Why? why? Of course. Why? why? Things. Why? why? Christmas lights. Why? Why? No, so you're Streaming not doing it right. You're ruining it now. Don't ruin oh. our thing, all right? Don't come, come in here. On. Oh, my God. Oh, dude. I didn't know it was a thing. Well, it's not really our thing. It's Stone Cold Steve Austin's, but you did kind of come in and just start saying things that you thought of because you saw this Christmas tree. <laughs> no, I was doing like, I love lamp. No, I would never. <laughs> see, that you put me in an unfair spot there. <laughs> like, no, I, I didn't know, like I didn't know it was a you. thing. I thought that was just like ad lib. You know, shame on you guys yeah, for having right. charisma and right. being confusing. You're right. Yeah, you're right. All right. I think this has gone well. Yeah, I I, so yeah. it was good for me. Me too. Yep. Yeah. We should do this more often. Okay. That's what I was about to say. I'm a big fan of yours, man. I hope you guys win. Because like no. you said, if you have two losses, what it's going to be is what it's going to no. be. You win, nothing matters. No, but this was a very, very cool, it's a very cool medium. Um, and uh, uh, there's some relatedness too, because what, you, what you're saying to me that you, it, it, there's a lot of like genuine um, commitment to the conversation. You're, you guys are listening and invested. And no. this day and age, like... That's a big deal for people because usually people are like, uh, phone. Oh, what's your phone rule in the building? Uh, I mean, they're grown men. Yeah, because Cliff Kingsbury, remember he became a head coach and he said, right, we're going to have cell phone breaks like every 20 minutes, 15 minutes, let guys go do their thing. And you're like, Cliff ain't ever going to win in the NFL. Letting right. these guys do this is like, well, it's a whole different generation. You'd no, rather you, them on their phone when themselves as opposed to in the meetings. But it's yeah, also I would prefer people to have human connection. But I'm not going to. I'm not going to trivialize their manhood by saying I, I'm going to have an opinion. Um, I'm going to do everything I can that there's as much interaction with teammates as possible. But if they want to be on their phone, I'll probably just give them passive aggressive shit for it. <laughs> yes. Nice. It's but like move. in front of everybody, by the way. Oh yeah. Oh, look at old cousin here. Oh, oh, hey. you know, hey, this guy's been locked more yeah. minutes on his phone than anybody. Oh yeah. Um, but the, uh, yeah, I don't, I think, People respond to liberty um, in in many regards, um, and if you have the right people in the building, you don't need rules like that. Are you guys gonna play cornhole down there in the locker room? You got a ping pong table in the locker room. Have you thought about that whole stuff? The culture of all that little trivial stuff. Um, carols. We're gonna sing carols. Oh, all year. All year. So when uh, you yeah. know when a real important part of the season comes, almost playoff time, Dude. we're singing. Uh, yeah. No, I think uh, I think it's a, and you want. I don't know. I haven't thought about the games. I know that I know that the locker room is. Um, uh, I, I changed that up a little bit. What you do? Redesign it a little bit. Put a little different lacquer on the wood. No, I just just put players around different players. Ah, I was always yeah. in the middle of the locker room. They had me yeah. over there in the middle. Do you think about that type of stuff? Like which offensive line, with defensive line, with linebackers? With yeah, like no, I just think it's important that there's an emphasis on team. And when the, there's different places that have been where um, guys were put in the locker room by position group. And that was like weird because I'm like, yo, you are with them all day long. You do not even know that guy over there, bro. <laughs> like you're, you go to media all uh, on the field and meeting room, whatever. So a great way. I mean, you log that time over an entire season. There's a lot of time spent in the locker room. What if you had offense next to defense and vice versa? Mixed it up a little bit. Put crazy Larry next to um, subdued. Subdued Stan. Oh nice. yeah, and then Studious Steve is in there Studious too. Studious Steve, he's always studying. <laughs> yeah, he is that guy. So yeah. eight hundred ninety-one thousand clips. Right. Studious Steve looked at. Right? Can you believe he almost uh, he almost passed because that paper cut that deep one. Oh, oh man! What never thought. You never know where there's danger around the corner until it happens to you. Well, I want to let you know. I assume you 
have expected this moment through the way you've willed things and talked things into existence. You're yeah. prepared. You're ready. 17 years in the NFL is a long time. Yeah. 22 years also a long time for a playoff win for them. Appreciate Good luck it. down there, and we appreciate the hell out of you stopping by. Ladies and gentlemen, the head coach of the Miami Dolphins, Mike McDaniel. Thank you, man. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right, we'll be back uh, on Monday here on YouTube. Six minutes, we'll be back on Sirius. The boys will be here. I have to hop on a bird to Miami for smack. Don! Tonight, I believe AJ's getting out of here. I could have never expected you were going to be here for that long, Lily. That was very nice of you, man. Very, very nice of well, you. Well, my boss, Ann, didn't come rip me out, so we were just going. Well, that's kind of what I was looking for, too. So <laughs> I appreciate I that happening. No, it must, have been go it must be going all right. Yeah. She usually lets me know with a vibe. I can feel her vibe when she's like, yeah, you're, you're being terrible right now. You're never terrible. No. You. You hear that, Ann? <laughs> <laughs> she everybody heard it. She heard it. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, we're back on the other side on Sirius. If not, we're back on Monday. See you tonight at SmackDown. You are the best humans on earth. Hashtag PMS Feel Good Friday. The boys will tweet out a giveaway for something to celebrate this monumental week that we had. Uh, we'll see you soon. Cheers.